Welcome to Electric Boogaloo Part 2, a podcast dedicated to the glory that is the movie sequel. On this show, you'll join myself, Taj Hodges, along with co-host Stephen Romo, in a monthly discussion with a guest who feels particularly passionate about yet another Part 2 film. We hope to bring to light the beauty, the horror, the desperate money grabs, and the welcome second acts that make up the sequels we hate to love and love to hate. Steven and myself make no claims to be experts in film, nor do we claim the rights to any of the films we review. We just feel passionately about dumb stuff and we're bored. If you're bored too and have ever played Electric Boogaloo, this might just be the podcast for you! Welcome back to another exciting episode of Electric Boogaloo Part 2, the podcast that uh, brings to light all of the inequities uh, fraught upon sequels in this current day and age, and also in the past. Um, Today is absolutely no exception to that. Our topic will definitely have us questioning whether we actually give sequels the benefit of the doubt or if we get stuck in the mindset that a sequel is just another filthy cash grab or an attempt just to make more money off of a property um Today's uh, topic is actually really interesting because it's kind of the kickoff to a whole franchise or uh, uh, a whole a whole idea that uh, that a, 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 a new brought era. Up. a new era of film exactly and really like taking filmmaking. the concept of comic books and and turning them into cinema. Um, but before I keep rambling, because I could ramble about comic books all day, um, God as, dang it. you know, unfortunately, uh, know today it. here on Electric Boogaloo Part 2, we are down one member of our crew. Uh, unfortunately, Stephen Romo could not be here. Uh, he is at uh, Westbound Bar. Doing something. Yeah. He's serving uh, up some drinks. Serving up some so drinks. Shout out to Stephen Romo and Westbound. It's a beautiful course. spring day out there. So I, I actually... Kind of envy him, but not really. <laughs> not really. But uh, but obviously, you've already heard filling in his stead. And as always, present, uh, ever present, our producer, you know him, you love him, Justin Miller. Hi. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, Thank what's you up? for always being with what's us. Up, hey. I got um, I got to I got to pull in the reins today on you guys. I know because this is uh, we're we're talking about some comic book material, and uh, both myself and our guest are avid comic book fans. Mm. I, him him more so than myself, but um, I definitely have my. Yeah, we yeah. we're both wearing our comic book shirts. I, I guess <laughs> very proudly. And so, and so this is how I knew it was going to be like this, right? Because I I opened the door today, and, and it's like. <laughs> Two grown ass men wearing comic book shirts, just and like that was also not already planned. Already talking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> already <laughs> talking <laughs> about the movie, already discussing the movie um, that we were about to watch. So yeah, while I'm we gonna, watched, I'm gonna have to pull in the reins. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. So I, then I, I, I'm gonna give you a hand signal. You can't see this audience, but there's gonna be a really <laughs> dramatic hand signal that's basically essentially it, like wrap it up, bring it on in, wrap it up, <laughs> B. Land, land that plane. <laughs> no, so so then to to. Uh, uh, avoid wasting any additional time uh, today. A uh, good friend of mine who uh, actually just uh, recently came back to Tucson for a little bit on his way from uh, Austin, Texas, out to Los Angeles, California. Um, I met him when he was an usher at Centennial Hall, and he then graduated and went off to uh, work in the film industry. But while he was at University of Arizona, uh, produced a film titled Dorm of the Dead, which Jeez. you can still catch on YouTube in its in its entirety. I watched mm-hmm. it this week. It was fun. I actually saw it at Gallagher when it uh, when it, I think it was no no no. It oh, was uh, one of the learning centers. Yeah, in the ILC. Oh yeah. shit! I didn't but, know uh, you went to yep, that screening. I was That's at the awesome. Screening of that show. Um, also, just recently uh, released uh, an independent mm-hmm. film which he wrote, directed. Uh, uh, produced uh, sound and film edited <laughs> a called, lot of uh, hats as I keep telling buddy it's uh, a lot of hats on that yeah, last called one, yeah. knock knock but let me instead of just telling you his uh, laundry list of accomplishments introduce him ladies and gentlemen uh, Toby Kanto Woo! 
Yes. Thank well, you so much for joining yeah. us in this brief interlude in Tucson. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it, just, it just kind of fell together. We ran into each other at Trader Joe's one day and you huh. were like, how's the podcast? How's the podcast? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I was like, and, it was like, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. You actually <laughs> listen to that? Yeah. I am very yeah. supportive of my friend's endeavors. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Well, thank yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for for having me. I'm. Uh, it's this is like super super fun. If there's anything that you can get me to talk hours and hours and probably way too damn long on, it's either movies or comic books. And today we get to talk we get about to talk about both. Both. Yeah. Both. When the two worlds collide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before <laughs> before we uh, yeah before we go too too much further though, but uh, yes. So you were a, a film student when I met you. You were working both at Centennial Hall as an usher and at Gallagher Theater. At Gallagher Theater. Yeah. And I was also uh, working at. Uh, UATV, which was the student run um, like news center. Okay. Uh, which is funny because you're saying the thing about the hand signals, and I used to basically the new the producers <laughs> yeah. would be telling yeah. all the reporters, you know, just flipping their hands, telling them to stop talking. It was yes, I, I will completely latch on to that. Rapid. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was uh, a media arts student. Uh, I was pretty active within uh, the community of the the film community at the school, and uh, I was in the on the producing track, and we were able to. Uh, convince our teacher and I don't think I think he really just wanted us to do this but he wanted us to make a feature film and, and we yeah. kind of we saw we saw the light and decided to yeah. follow the path and we were the first and I think only class to have made a feature film as our yeah. uh, as our final project so man I remember those days you were you were run pretty ragged you yeah. were I mean every day was like god I just had to get like seven students and we had to be outside at 6 a.m. <laughs> and we had to film because there's no other time yeah. we're allowed <laughs> to film the show. yeah you were but I I uh, rewatched it and I was thinking this is I mean you know obviously it's the 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 quality of effects that you have at your disposal yeah, when you're at a yeah. university but everything else was really well done and 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 uh yeah you know there's there's definitely a couple of moments like uh the uh there's a sequence on the football field yeah where um apparently the zombies like stopped for a snack and like because everyone's like no i'll stay you guys go ahead and they're like no no and it's this very long at, drawn out thing i was like weren't they just behind but yeah. no it's still very very fun yeah. uh zombie flick and uh Definitely seems like that's uh, something that you're into. But it also, uh, you can see, like, there's definitely some Kevin Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, there's there's a scene where you go into a coffee shop and the girl says, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a nod. <laughs> um, there's definitely a lot of love for Tarantino in your films. Yeah. I mean, like, what? but, like, where do you say that uh, the love for film really started? Uh, honestly, it was just something that I think I've, I've always really been... Uh, I've been attached to is just kind of uh, media in general. Uh, as a kid, I uh, I think I made my parents watch uh, Ghostbusters more than any movie <laughs> possible, more times than they would probably ever want to. But, uh, you know, it just, I think, kind of started with that. And so, I yeah. mean, actually, between both uh, Dorm in the Dead and Knock Knock, there is this idea of this uh, misfit gang coming together to fight right. the forces of evil. So, right, right. Ghostbusters is very important to me. I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. As so then, should be. <laughs> so then to to move on to Knock Knock. That's, so uh, Dorm of the Dead. Uh, the IMDb has it down as a two, 2012 release. Mm -hmm. I know that you were uh, showing versions as early as like 2009. Yeah, 2009. Yeah, that's what, kind uh, of where we got the first uh, first cut together. Uh, we got to do a screening, I believe, the following year for the Phoenix Comic Con, which we yeah. won Best Student Film, which was 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 a blast. And then within uh, between that this, that screening, the initial screening at uh, at the Learning Center and the the screening at uh, the Phoenix Comic Con, you know, we were in tweaking and touching up and doing whatever we could to fix whatever we could. And right. in the process, uh, a gentleman uh, who when I was in school, we got the opportunity to go to the American Film Market when you actually during the writers' strike. Uh, that was happening and that's, it, there was a lot of stuff going down in LA and, yeah. uh, one of the gentlemen there, um, his name's Brian Ramage. He runs a company called brain damage films out of, uh, out of Phoenix. Actually, they do a lot of kind of like B level horror films. Right. He kind of gave us a tour about some of the wheelings and dealings of, of independent distribution. Mm -hmm. And it was a really great, uh, great kind of tour and, and inf a lot of information from him. Uh, and he was a friend of our teachers, uh, Patrick and, uh, when he heard my Patrick was like, you will not believe, you know, after you guys, after we went to the film market and he got to meet you guys, my class actually spent the whole semester making a film. And he actually asked if he could watch that. 
Uh, and we sent it to him and he's like, I want to, I want to put on DVD. Yeah. And it was this That's weird awesome, kind man. of like full yeah. circle <laughs> moment where it all kind of started at this one point and it, and it ended back there. And so that's how we got distribution. So it took a, it took a couple of years, but I think yeah. around 2012 is when it actually like, or 2011 is when it actually got out on, uh, on DVD and Blu-ray and all that stuff. So. Yeah. And honestly, Sweet, the, the way that that, that movie is, I mean, obviously there's some pop culture references here and there, but, um, when I watched it earlier this week, so there's nothing that really like dates it necessarily mm-hmm. besides like apparel maybe yeah you know yeah but uh but yeah it was still really fun yeah so so okay so you graduate u of a uh you shoot out to austin texas mm-hmm. um and uh then in 2017 knock knock happens which uh, it seems like you're really the the uh, the main. You're the flagship. I mean, it's, it seems like this is your project. Yeah, yeah. So, how long is this idea? Like, when when did this concept? Was this something you were thinking about in college, and then finally got around to producing? Actually, or? knock knock kind of just came out of uh, came out a, a little bit out of nowhere. I, I was at a point where I uh, had started my own kind of production company, Pop Art Pictures, and I was doing. Uh, uh, small videos for people, highlight concert videos. I did some like promotional videos for small businesses. Yeah. Uh, but I was just really hungry to get back into film. That's always been kind of my, my biggest passion is, is writing and directing. And I was having trouble. I, I knew that I wanted to do something, but I needed it to be something that I was really going to be passionate about. And right. it, it all started, it was kind of funny. I was working at a, a Whole Foods S grocery store <laughs> at the time. Uh, and there was just a lot of really great great colorful characters that work there that I really, really love. And uh, the two main characters of, of Knock Knock, uh, Carrie Tartak and, and Cece Berry, uh, they were friends. The one was working in the wine department, the other one worked in grocery. And I, you know, I was just closing one night and kind of just watching them riff off each other. And uh, it was just really funny, but something about the relationship really stuck out. And uh, I remember closing up, walking home, walking, yeah, walking from work to home. And this idea of this neighbor intruding on another neighbor, uh, very desperate uh, to find the truth about who this new person living in their in their complex, just started really playing out, out in my head. And the more I thought about, it, the more the details kind of started revealing. And anytime an idea uh, starts to just run on its own, I immediately jump on it. To me, that's yeah. kind of the universe telling you there, there's something to, to work with there. And uh, you know, it, it took me, I would say I started working on notes and outlines immediately. And I think within a couple months I had a first draft going And originally it actually was supposed to be a short film. Yeah. It was supposed to only run like 20 minutes and then it just didn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I right. accidentally made technically another feature. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm really, I'm really proud of the accomplishment and everybody who, who participated and helped, uh, you know, they were just wonderful and I really hope that it's something I can do again soon, especially if I'm able to continue the story because I have a lot of plans for the uh, the knock knock story. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. No, I I got a copy this week. It is available currently uh, through Amazon on DVD. Um, it sounds like in the near future, there's going to be more, uh, digital platforms that'll have it available. Yeah, yeah. They'll be so streaming, I think easier. within the next three to four months. That's nice. what they're aiming for. Yeah. But if you're desperate to see it now, definitely check it out on Amazon. You can get it within, uh, we're, we're plugging Amazon now. This <laughs> but anyhow, um, everything. yeah, I thought it was, they I thought it was really fun. Everything. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great, in my opinion, like a great stylistic, uh, calling card for you. Cause the, you. the, the, the visual, uh, continuity of the whole, uh, uh, film is is really cool um and just to give uh, our listeners an understanding of what the film is uh it's uh what a retired boxer coming home to his apartment complex mm-hmm. to find uh one of his neighbors intruding into his life and uh over the course of the next you know short period of time other neighbors come in to to form this kind of ragtag team of misfits that are all it's seemingly colluding against a neighbor that's maybe just misunderstood uh, in the complex. Or maybe uh, a member of the undead. But you'll <laughs> have to watch to find out. Uh, no, but, you know, it, it, is, it is a lot of fun. Uh, and, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely we're checking out. Yeah, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so, it, it's, it was really inspired by my love of 80s horror comedies. Yes. Uh, it's, it's 
I keep telling people it's like, uh, or a friend of mine described it when he read the script. It's like Scooby Doo meets the Evil Dead. Right. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Like I definitely got kind of like a sold. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to watch it. I mean, it, not that it was quite as as gross or ridiculous as this, but I definitely got kind of like a Texas Chainsaw Two vibe. Oh, interesting. From it. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. like how things were lit in certain mm-hmm. ways. Like there's a lot of like you know reds and greens and like, mm-hmm. but you're in an apartment, so you're like, why would it be that color? But it yeah. just like works really well with it. But yeah, it definitely has that feeling of yeah. like 80s 90s cult vhs horror yeah. comedy like is it supposed to be funny oh well, but yeah <laughs> but this definitely isn't and there's definitely some some interesting characters in it to say the least um so yeah i have to ask who was your favorite character when you watched it um i think it was probably oh what's what's his name with the 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 goggles and the, oh dragon yeah dragon's pretty great right uh, that's awesome he's he's a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, I, I don't know. Like you, there's you you start to feel an attachment with everyone yeah. at a certain point. Awesome, you know? and and it has a very kind of like I think I said this to you earlier. It has kind of if if uh, our listeners have ever seen the movie The Burbs, I think we recommended it relatively recently. Love that movie. Yeah, um, it God, has I kind of like a, The Burbs meets The Apartment uh, Dwellers feel to it, <laughs> where it's like what you see you you, know, you just describing the plot almost like well that's. That's very similar. Right, it is. It is kind of a a Burbs-esque kind of idea in an apartment complex. But so it works because like apartments are weird. I've lived in so many different apartments and like neighbors are weird in apartments. (laughs) You never know. They they want you so bad to Mm -hmm. not know who the... Heck, they are. Yeah, or yeah it's the like, complete and that, opposite. And then it's just <laughs> exactly like opposite. they're yeah. always and, and in your life. A neighbor that wants you. Yeah, it's just like, I've hey, you want to hang out? Like, yeah, no, <laughs> hey, absolutely no. not. <laughs> no, I, I have my I have my cats to talk to, dude. I'm sorry, and they're way more interesting. This is my box. Yeah, Go it's away. really funny you guys both say that because when I was writing the screenplay, and I was kind of getting out there. There were some some notes saying that I just don't understand how these people. Uh, could be friends or be so close. And the right. thing is, like, I was taking a lot of that from my experience of living in the dorms, right. which was the first time I was out of home. Yeah. And I was surrounded by people from all over the country, some, you know, from out of the country. There's all probably a little bit more life. bonding that goes on in a dorm, too, yeah. because all of you are kind of thrust into that exactly. situation. Whereas uh, apartments can be different. But yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I, like I think that true. kind of camaraderie, like, does happen. People, yeah. especially kind of lonely people, sometimes they just find themselves, especially oh, yeah. in the same spot. So. No, no, no. I, I had all kinds of wacky, quirky neighbors and friends in apartment complexes over the course of the years. So, yeah, it, it totally made sense to me in that respect. But if you've never lived in an apartment, then it might not make any sense to you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so so now you're here on your way out to L.A. And uh, then you're going to keep uh, plugging away in the old film. Is that, is that the ultimate goal? Yeah, the ultimate goal is to just keep doing what I'm doing. I would you know, love to continue making films either independently or, or mainstream, uh, whatever I could get the opportunity to do. I just I love telling uh, all kinds of stories. And uh, I'm even doing a music video right now that I'm hoping to release in the next uh, month or two uh, for a hip hop guy in Austin. So, you know, like any any production that I can do, writing, directing, producing, editing. I, I like it all. I love I love to create. Cool. And yeah. if people wanted to see the creations you've made? Uh, the best place right now to check is on my YouTube uh, page on Pop Art Pictures, uh, as well as you can get any updates on my uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, which is basically at Pop Art Pictures. Uh, and you'll be able to kind of get all the news and the wheelings and dealings and what's coming out and what's new. So... Yeah, okay. check, check it out, please. Check it out, people. Pop art. Give me a like for the love of God. So when I <laughs> ran into Toby, um, I was like, oh, shoot. Like, this is my my brother in comic love. Um, I immediately hit him up and said, what about like Spider-Man 1 and 2? I think that everyone forgets that those original Toby Maguire ones are actually pretty good. Fucking dope. Uh, they're amazing. We, they yeah. are, like, yeah. But, and, and it's like cheating because right. everybody knows Spider-Man 2 is better than the it's original spider yeah. You know, I, 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 it again, might still be one of the, well, it definitely is one of the best superhero movies to ever be produced, yeah. but it might be the best. I mean, we have been talking all day and Avengers mm. definitely is at the very top of that list, but yeah. it, there's a part of me that it might be the best I, superhero movie. The, I the, fucking uh, love Spider-Man. That is debatable. It makes a good superhero yes. yeah. film. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, so we we got together, we went to Shays, we had a couple of beverages and talked about all the different possibilities. And ultimately we landed on something that's honestly for me really near and dear to my heart. And uh, you know, I don't know that we're necessarily gonna be debating whether one is better than two today, but just the the validity of uh the second film, I yeah. think, and how, how it kind of gets overlooked. Um, but uh, so today we are going to be discussing Iron Man 1 and 2. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah, oh, just to give oh, a little, oh, little oh, background on oh, Iron oh, Man oh, himself. Oh, Iron oh, Man oh, first uh, appeared uh, back in uh, March of 1963 in Tales of Suspense number 39. Yes. He was uh, created by uh, Stan Lee. And uh, Larry Lieber and designed by Don Heck and Jack Kirby and um, later went on to have his own comic book uh, that started in 1968. Uh, He was basically Marvel's uh, attempt at having uh, the quintessential capitalist. Uh, He definitely was a vehicle for any kind of Cold War propaganda that they wanted to issue, Um, but ultimately was one of the most beloved characters. And uh, funnily enough, uh, if they received fan mail from women, usually it was for (laughs) Iron Man because he was like the uh, he was like the quintessential ladies man. uh, Howard Hughes, ultimate bachelor, inventor, debonair, (laughs) scientist and gentleman, man about town. Um, But yeah, so, and this is the comic that when I was maybe eight, seven or eight, my Uncle John uh, first got me into. It was the first book that I bought, and back when comics were, you know, a buck, buck fifty a piece. So, um, so yeah, it was really important to me. Um, And yeah, so Toby, what what was it about the Iron Man uh, movies that made you want to? Well, I mean, as a dude who's been reading comics for God knows how long, uh, you know, Iron Man one is important because it basically sets up what is now become cinema itself, which is the Marvel yeah. cinematic universe. Uh, but you know, from that watching that movie to be, you know, someone who been dreaming of or having my own fan casting as, you know, with my brothers and, you know, making up actors we think would be great as, as Marvel characters, but then seeing them not only achieve that in the best way possible, but then to set up the foundation for what has has become Avengers movies right. uh, was just nothing but exciting. And, you know, each one, each one of those films are, are steps towards this bigger Avengers piece. And some of them kind of get the shaft. And I, and I think that Iron Man two is one of them. I, I actually, yeah. I really, really enjoyed Iron Man two, but every single person I meet tells me how much they don't give a shit about it. Or everybody says it sucks online. Uh, and I don't think anybody really gives us a fair share because I think in terms of a, a character piece, which I think it's, it is first and foremost, it's definitely not as, I think, action packed um, as the first one. But there's just some really, yeah. really, really great character moments in, in Tony Stark's journey and especially the connection with his father. But then also what becomes the idea that this guy needs to find help. And mm-hmm. then through finding help, we obviously know that they're going to have to stop bigger and badder threats and yeah, all that jazz. Uh, plus, it has a really good villain in yeah. the second one. Yeah. Very, very similar to to you know, Doc Ock in the second Spider Man right. movie. We're not talking about Spider Man two though. We're no. talking about <laughs> Iron Man two. But, yeah, but if I'm you'd like to talk about Spider Man two, let us know yeah. and we'll put you on <laughs> an episode. Like, yeah. I will talk yeah. about the crap out of that. Wait, talk about the crap out of that. But, There's um, that crap. It's yeah, but I, I was definitely I'm definitely one of those people that doesn't really care too much about the second mm-hmm. Iron Man movie. Uh, right. I just thought it was a bridge yeah. in, in sort of the Iron Man story. And it's somewhat le- is. And, le- and, and I feel the same way about the third one. And they're very fine films, but, you know, uh, the Avengers came out and it kind of a sort of uh, obliterated oh, yeah. the yeah. need oh, to yeah. have... Sequels. You could, you could say that. that uh, I mean, story, but, I don't think you 100 percent agree with this, but I feel like you could say that about the Thor movie. Like mm, the original, the, yeah. the original Thor movie is really just like, okay, so here's this guy. This is his backstory. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, now he's a part of this universe. Go. Like, yeah. it wasn't until for me at least, it wasn't until Ragnarok that I really liked Thor movies. Yeah. And now, like in freaking Infinity War, well, damn, had, like, like the he, baddest yeah, fucking. It was yeah. like the best movie. parts of that movie. So yeah, uh, but, but yes, you could absolutely say the same things about uh iron man two and three uh to a certain extent um i i want to get into a rant about iron man three but we've already (laughs) talked so much um but um but yeah so okay iron man one uh comes out in 2008 
Uh, it was a big blockbuster May release. Uh, it uh, was a budget of, let me see here, how much did they end up spending on this? They like spent $140 million dollars, was a big uh, chunk to produce of the film. Change, yeah. It was a big chunk of Marvel change. And just as a reminder, this is a pre-Disney uh, merger. This is Paramount yeah. era. Uh, so this was still before they had that Disney money to really back them. Yeah. And it was kind of a risk. Uh, they cast Robert Downey Jr. as the lead role. He really had been out of uh, the, the industry. Like, I can't really remember the timeline specifically, but Kiss Kiss Bang Bang came after this, right? Uh, before. before. It was like the, but I mean, that but was, it was like successful, but on a, you know, a very independent level. Exactly. It still wasn't necessarily had a cult the vehicle. Following. Yeah, exactly. To like give this guy what is going to be an ultimately a huge franchise. Right. So so here we go. Uh, we've had some failures with comic book movies. Spider-Man uh, is doing its thing, but not great. Uh, it, has Spider-Man 3 already come out? Spider-Man 3 came out already. Yeah, so already yeah. people are losing. Yeah, they're losing faith. Uh, <laughs> And and now we're gonna give it a shot. And well, so there, we there was a Batman movies mm-hmm. that were the Batman Chris Nolan. That's true. Out. Chris Nolan was there. Batman movies era. came out. Yeah, and that and that's what kind of uh, sort of like I guess Spider Man three was such a disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> but well, yeah. Batman kind of saved it, and yeah. it did. people the started idea caring about movies. superhero. Yeah, that's definitely true because but, actually it was the same year. Two thousand eight is Dark Knight. <sighs> Which I, you know, I think everyone probably agrees is like the quintessential. I, am I going to say yeah. quintessential? How many times am I going to say this? Uh, I, well, so far it's we're been on three. <laughs> uh, no, no, so that count, was but. definitely the 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 best of the three. Chris Nolan. Uh, I mean, that would be hard to argue otherwise. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So just to give us an idea of what was going on that year, though, it was a crazy year in movies. Uh, top five movies: Dark Knight number one, Iron Man number two. Uh, we got Indiana Jones. And the Crystal Skull is number three. I guess I just for like nostalgia. It. Really, no. I like it. Really, yes, really. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of different CGI of gophers, man. That's oh, yeah. uh, it's, you know, I know, but it wasn't though. a bad yeah. story, and, yeah. and it was a good continuation of the story. Yeah. Anyways, did it need to I be know. continued? I think was my argument. Like I, no. you know, like Last no. Crusade. It's even called the Last Crusade, yeah. and I yeah. get that that's not meaning like the end, but it could. Look. Yeah. Look, a- after Raiders of the Lost Ark, they didn't need to do any other. No, yeah. they didn't. I mean, that was it. It doesn't it's get true. better than that. And but they, you know, why not? I would love <laughs> so to. Why not? <laughs> yeah, Crystal Skulls. Anyways, keep going. So yeah, that's number three. Uh, Hancock at number four. So yet another, you know, Good quote one. unquote like hero that. superhero film. Well, you know. Anti hero, yeah, and then number five is Wally, which uh, I is still, still love it, still, still love to it. this day one of the all time best, beautiful, beautiful Pixar. film. Um, but you also have things like uh, Rambo, uh, Tropic Thunder, Pineapple Express, Incredible Hulk, which did come out in the same year and was technically the next film in this new MCU universe. Yes. Uh, Which Marvel's I actually <laughs> really like enjoy. Oh, I yeah, really no. enjoy that movie. Yeah. It was great. Uh, it was unfortunate that uh, we could not keep um, w- of Edward course, Norton. Edward Norton, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Ruffalo did definitely fill that void yeah. really quick. Um, Ruffalo's better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but I think at that point, I mean, I guess technically it was only the, the second Hulk movie, but. Uh, based on the TV show that we had, mm-hmm. of course, historically, and then uh, Hulk, uh, it was definitely the best uh, Bruce yeah. Banner. Yeah. 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 But we're way off now. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways back to Iron Man. Uh, great cast. You've got Robert Downey Jr., who we already expressed. Uh, you've got Gwyneth Paltrow, of course, as Pepper Potts. Uh, mm-hmm. She will, of course, come back. Um, you also have uh, a couple of characters that don't make it back in the next one. Uh, uh, Rhodey, uh, James Rhodes, uh, Colonel James yeah. Rhodes. Yes. Uh, he, in this one, played by Terrence Howard, Yeah. Uh, but does not make the trip back to Iron Man 2. Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, whip, whip. 
you also wait, have wait. Uh, Jeff Bridges uh, as Obadiah Stain, who Such is of a course perfect casting oh, man. choice. Great cast, yeah, great, great cast. cast right there. Because, and I even said it. I, I had a whole moment. I think uh, I was a little in my own head about this, but uh, you know, he's he seems so harmless, but it's like harmless like a teddy bear. But you forget, like that's still a bear. Like it's still like, <laughs> yeah. got claws and could attack you. And like you see that shift at a certain point in the movie, where it's like, oh, that's a bear. That's yeah. not a teddy bear yeah. anymore. He's very uh, conniving and yeah. mean. No, great, great casting with him. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, Jensen, uh, who has p- been in every incarnation pretty much of the uh, Iron Man origin story uh, with different ethnic backgrounds. But in this one, uh, he's... I think from the well, Middle Eastern uh, to a certain extent, but yeah. um, uh, played by Sean Taub, who, uh, yes, uh, I, I think uh, was mostly known for Kite Runner and his run in Lois and Clark, The Adventures of <laughs> yeah. Superman. Yeah, you you nailed it, Toby. <laughs> you nailed it when you said he stole every scene. He's, yeah, he's, 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 every it's like, scene that he was in, it yeah, was just so yeah, gravitated. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of. They, I think they tried to parallel the same thing too when they got uh, Stanley Tucci to play Erskine in Captain America. It was yeah. like you know that guy. He's gonna be there for a minute, but he's gonna give that that spark to start the fire within these oh, people man. to become the heroes they're gonna be. And so good. It's and, an inspirational kind of. Oh, he he had so little, but he gave so much. And exactly. yeah, no, and it is it is a really really great way to kick off the movie yeah. and it's so funny because as i'm thinking about the movie in my head right now it seems like so long ago in the film but man it really does it carries through the entire film yeah like yeah his, his presence and then of course um uh Farhan tahir who plays raza who uh i think toby you pointed out was uh the initial captain in star trek yeah yeah uh, the calvin the first I think reboot did. yeah uh, but uh, but yeah, so so some great cast that didn't make it to the second one. We'll we'll cover some of the other cast when we start talking about Iron Man two, just to skip some time. But uh, since we don't have Romo here today, uh, Justin, if you would please give us kind of your you know three to five minute synopsis oh, of really? uh, Iron Man, oh, uh, no. you know something like that. I mean, you could okay. run along, run on. No, to, to, no, it's fine. Know, our our listener is used to it. <laughs> yeah, right. We we, we um, really enjoy Paul. Paul is, Paul's <laughs> like, yeah. I know that I'm gonna have to pause and like come back to this episode a little later so um yeah boy iron man one what well, wasn't it it was the first uh mcu it was first, the first mcv film yeah it was the definitely first in Marvel the first film in what they consider pictures, phase yeah. one and uh yeah it's basically uh for a lot of people kind of like touchstone for the universe and where it yeah. springs from like yeah. either backwards or forwards whether it's captain america or you know yeah. all that and you, you can definitely tell that they they uh, sunk a lot of uh effort time revisions and uh there's i mean zero fat in this in yeah. this film i mean there's really not a wasted tangent anywhere in, in no. the movie no, there's um, four writers, so it's obvious that there was a huge editorial process yeah. in regards to this film. Yeah, they were yeah, like, "What? Yeah. Can, what needs to be here?" Yeah, um, and then of course, and because just because I didn't mention it, directed by uh, John Favreau, Favreau, famous, famous of course for. Uh, for swingers and well, yeah, swingers. The Thora. He didn't direct swingers, though, right? Like he. Well, he yeah, wrote he wrote it. it. Uh, it was Doug Lyman yeah. who did the Born Identity, which I always oh, thought was really funny. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually. Okay, so anyways, Iron Man. What? <laughs> uh, so let's just go with the movie. Um, boy, how how do how do I how do I how do I do a <laughs> synopsis of this? Okay, so um, in the opening scene, we see uh, Tony Stark in the fun V, as we come to learn, <laughs> uh, holding a glass of whiskey, surrounded by military folk, uh, going somewhere or coming back from somewhere. <laughs> Either way, there's Traveling. ACDC playing, and. Um, um, uh, you know, there's a MySpace joke, and you're like, "Oh, this is 2008." Um, but <laughs> anyway, 2008 was kind yeah. of a dated joke. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Even then, uh, even then, when are they going to um, dub it? So he's like, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I well, just, just the whole, just the whole uh, military Humvee in the desert kind of, you know, we're, we're fighting terrorists thing is very dated at this point now, right? Because it's all over and there's no more of that happening. Um, <laughs> you know, send robots. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we'll, and we'll get to that. Yeah, later. this is foreshadowing <laughs> to that. Yeah, this is foreshadowing to that. So anyways, um, 
He's uh, there's a MySpace joke and then there's an explosion, um, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, you know, it's over. Shit, uh, as yeah, if to say, <laughs> yeah, the, the shit hits the fan. Um, uh, Tony Stark, um, the man who's carrying the glass of whiskey. I don't know if you picked up on that just by listening. <laughs> um, gets uh, gets damaged, <laughs> gets exploded upon right. by one of his own bombs, um, and. Uh, and then we, uh, that's, it goes dark, cut scene, next scene, flashback, and you sort of get a, an idea of who Tony Stark is, mm-hmm. which is, so that beginning is great. You, yeah. You sort of, you sort of get where exactly everything is going to be heading, uh, who, who are the people we're going to be dealing with, yeah. and who the real enemy is. Yeah. <laughs> How did Tony get to this place? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so then we get to find out that he is a uh, sort of a, a, a billionaire inventor playboy. Um, I mean, so much so that he even gets uh, Elon Musk to show up and shake his hand. <laughs> uh, Granted, that's in Iron Man 2. two but, okay, <laughs> uh, but okay. But yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and basically Tony Stark is based on uh, Hughes. And, yeah. Um, uh, so, th- I mean, if that's any indicator of th- the type of power and money this person has and brilliance. Right. Um, so, yes, we get to see him be an <laughs> asshole for about 10 minutes, a very well-timed 10-minute sequence where he, uh, he, uh, he uh, is receiving an award, but he's just too cool to even be there to accept the reward. And he's gambling downstairs and he has his partner uh, accept the award for him. Meanwhile, he uh, gets approached by a reporter, ends up having a one night f- stand, and <laughs> then all of a sudden he's like late for shit because he's just too busy building stuff and being cool, and yep. then drives really fast. And <laughs> and, uh, and meanwhile, the 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 backstory here is like the backstory here is like, hey, by the way. This guy sells bombs. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. does not war, care. War yeah. 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 And does, he does, does not care off. about who's, uh, what, what, the, what the other end of this, this, these bombs are. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't care <laughs> seems, at all. It seems he, like he, he, act- he makes them, he's a, he designs them, he thinks they're really cool, but he doesn't think about the human impact of mm-hmm. a bomb. Or I think it's just at this point, he's not thinking about the human impact uh, in terms of, he, he thinks it's controlled in terms of who who's getting access to to these yeah. weapons. Yeah. Uh, but he's also least, not making an effort to look. No, 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 he's no, not no. making he's, an effort yeah. at all. Exactly. You know, ig- ignorance is bliss. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's where he's at. So, um, we, we jump to that scene where he, uh, um, He's back in the desert. And then you realize, oh shit, this guy's an asshole. If he got hit by his own bomb, he, <laughs> karma, he karma's he a bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Goes so, uh, around, comes yeah, around. Exactly. Hey, so, 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 so then we're thrust into this, um, this sort of, uh, he was kidnapped by terrorists uh, mm-hmm. thing here. And um, boy, I'm going to. I'm going to skip forward. So so that that's basically where we yeah. started. He gets kidnapped by terrorists to build a bomb that he's been bombing them with. Right. Um but you know they got more than they bargained for when they <laughs> Tony Stark. Now they got they? one man in the yeah. wrong cage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so of course he of course he go he goes about the business of uh, be, befriending the the guy who saved his life. Um Yes, Jensen. Um, yes. Oh Jensen. Yeah. Um who's just, you know, he, he's he's the better actor in those scenes, really. Yeah. I got I got to admit. Well, I think yeah, actually he, Robert Downey Jr. just a lot of those scenes are him just listening. Like he just yeah. listens. Like he's just like uh-huh. he's just like naughty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so basically, what we find out in those scenes is what um, I guess the crux of of of, of uh, Tony Stark's uh, hubris yeah. and that and that his weakness is. His heart is going to die because his <laughs> bombs uh, put metal shrapnel in his chest, and right. he needs a power source to and a magnet to keep the metal shrapnel from entering his heart, and so he dies. Right. Um, 
It's going to die of a broken heart. He's going to die of a broken heart from his own bombs. Right. Dang, that's symbolic, yeah. son. Dude. I know. Yeah, he's carrying on the legacy of his father, which yeah. will be a, a subject for that will be for the next movie. But yeah. uh, but yes. So yeah, in, in those scenes when he's in a cave, we that's that's what we learn what's wrong with him, and then he quickly goes about hatching a plan to escape. And uh, he uses the resources, whatever resources uh, that the terrorists provide him, to uh, build a power source for his heart, uh, for the <laughs> maggot for his heart, and then uh, building a badass armored suit right. so that he can escape with. All to the Black Sabbath soundtrack. Yeah, Chun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, uh, Tom Morello dies. <laughs> Tom Morello, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. He's the first person who dies. So, um, um, yeah. And if you don't know anything about that, I guess Tom Morello actually asked. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's yeah, a right? huge comic book fan, and I think when he heard that it was you know happening, he just wanted to be a part of it. And John Favreau was like, "Yeah, we can, we can get you yeah. in." As an extra, and he's like, oh, he probably was like, I just want to be taken out by Iron yeah, Man. They're yeah, like, yeah, we, extra, we can do yeah. that. <laughs> and as an extra, he actually gets like the first kill. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome, it's a pretty yeah. awesome thing because, you know, his face gets highlighted. And then he gets and flung. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh shit. And then he gets flung, and it's like, and, and Tom Morello's like, mom. Mom, <laughs> I know, I know you've heard my music. This is not a music thing. I'm going to be in a movie. And Iron Man just blows me up. Remember, remember cool? how you used to say my love of comic books would get me nowhere? Nowhere. You see? Well, check this out. <laughs> yeah, no. I have successfully so, raged against the machine. So, yeah, so so Tony creates a perfect armor, kicks some ass. Yinsen, unfortunately, passes away. And uh, Tony comes out, lays waste to the weapons. Yeah. and uh, hits the, the rocket booster and flies away, uh, and he, finally and escaping the uh, the wrath of his uh, cap, captors. And he immediately crashes. And immediately crashes. Uh, but he immediately that, was, crashes that was a given. Like, he knew that. Yeah, and so his his buddy uh, saves him. Um, and um, and we haven't discussed the buddy yet. But the, Brody? Well, Brody Terrence saying. Howard. or Yeah, Howard, well, yeah. Colonel... Uh, James Rhodes. Yeah, Colonel James, Colonel James Rhodes. Rhodes. Yeah. Yes. So... Yeah, Colonel James Rose. Well, he's the one that's giving him the award. That's the only real exposure we have to him, and yeah. he's present uh, on the trip, yeah. <laughs> on the on the 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 uh, the stripper yeah. pole air, airplane ride. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good grief. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Colonel James Rose, Terrence Howard in this movie, problematic AF. Um, so yeah, right. Um, so, anyways, uh, that's where we're at now. Right. Uh, Tony Stark has a change of heart after eating a cheeseburger <laughs> about his life. That was and, a good uh, whopper, too, man. I could see it in his yeah. face. Yeah. yeah, and he says, I'm canceling all weapons production of Stark's Enterprises. Um, which immediately sends everybody around him like, no, dude, how, yeah. your what money, you, dude, like what you grew a conscious, but what about yeah. your money, bro? I, I, I know you have a gajillion dollars, but if you stop making weapons, you'll have like less than a gajillion dollars. <laughs> but ultimately really it's not, understand this. well, they're not concerned <laughs> with Tony. They're concerned with their, you know, board of trustees and all yeah. the people that make money off yeah. of the military industrial complex. And, you know, yeah. that is what Iron Man was originally designed to be, was kind of a model mm -hmm. for that, that yeah. old military, like selling, Industrial selling, complex. The, I selling mean, the idea of weaponry, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, that was actually when they were coming up with the, uh, the concept, they were, they were saying like, we want to throw uh, this idea in their faces and, and force them to enjoy it. And it turned out being a beloved character. Like yeah. they yeah. knew that this was not yeah. a popular idea. Somebody that works for the military, who's a rich, rich white dude. You know, I mean, at the time it probably didn't matter. He was white, but he was a very wealthy man, and like, you know, so so. Uh, yeah, it, it was yeah. it was very much like throwing in the face of all of the the readers, like the normal readers at that point, at least. Yeah. Well, I like mean, misfits. normal readers should have known immediately that Iron Man was the sort of the embodiment of the military yeah. industrial complex. I mean, that's I why mean, he was in the you know in his. I mean, he was story. written in sixty three, and, yeah. and yeah. Eisenhower's speech, which they were mentioned Viet "Beware Vietnam. of the military industrial complex," was in sixty one or two, sixty one, because he came out in sixty two. So that was his farewell. Farewell uh, speech and said, you know, before I yeah. leave my presidency, beware of the military industrial complex. Right. Um, 
So he was kind of the embodiment of that. And that's, yeah, that's yeah. definitely. And, and, and so in, in that era, when the movie was made, uh, 2008, it's like we had seven years of being at war with sort of these phantom terrorists in caves. Right. Uh, and just seven like, years of mission accomplished. Yeah, seven yeah. years of mission accomplished. Exactly. And so, and it's one of those things where it's um, you you, you can definitely tell that uh, one of those movie one of those movie things. It's like, dude, if we get rid of the terrorists in the movies, I bet we'll feel a whole lot better as like <laughs> yeah. waking up tomorrow. Yeah. And at that point, they had not found uh, Osama bin Laden. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, so it was kind of, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood taking care of the military's job for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, this, this whole, the whole idea of Iron Man being the, the sort of jump mm-hmm. to, uh, to the MC, you know, the Marvel universe. Yeah. It was a kickoff. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of, kind of crazy because it got started on this whole anti, uh, in, uh military industrial complex. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was it was it was the idea of we can do this in another way. Like the, yeah. we don't we don't need it to be. Yeah, I, and, and there's a lot of bureaucracy in the movie, and there's a lot of highlighting of of uh there there's too many there's too much bureaucracy. Yeah, we need a guy to go in there and take care oh, of business. Yeah. You know, and there's so there's a room whole, full of of uh, yeah, different uh, exactly. intelligence agencies. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's an entire. And we haven't gotten there yet. Am I sorry? I I went off <laughs> I on a tangent. <laughs> I have. And play producer on. I don't know the hand gesture, so yeah. I didn't know yeah, how to tell yeah, exactly. him to get back on track. No, you guys should have given me the hand gesture. No. Um, I, I picked up on it eventually, uh, but anyways. Uh, so where was I? Like? Okay, well, so basically, he escaped from his captors. Yes, and he realizes of heart. he realizes that obviously uh, he was unaware or was blinding himself to the fact that his weapons were getting into the hands of his his adversaries, yeah. or just like they were they were his weapons were causing harm to civilian populations. And so he takes it upon himself and says, now I have to go out there, find those weapon caches and destroy yeah. them. Take responsibility for yeah, my own exactly. actions. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, atonement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Not so, the name of this movie, but no. so, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> so, yeah, we get to see him gear up in his in his uh, workshop uh, and design a, a, his suit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good chunk of this movie is watching. Uh, yeah, and watch good, and, and, and it's such a wonderful chunk of mm-hmm. that movie. Absolutely, it's like you want to get to the meat and bones of the story, but the the story is basically you know the the this guy goes and becomes a hero. Yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he like steps in with a military cant. Yeah. Um, but you get to see him uh, gear up, build this suit. Meanwhile, his uh, the people who are running his company are saying. No, don't do that. We need to make money. And he's saying, well, why can't we invest in energy and things that don't kill people? No, we really need to make money. Ah, fuck you. I'm going to go and build some shit, which is something I'm really good at. Meanwhile, he's watching the news and he uh, comes to the conclusion well, I can take care of that problem that's happening right. yeah. halfway across the world. Let me just jump in my nifty new suit <laughs> <laughs> and just go step in with a military can't. Right. And so, yeah. And, and so there's definitely a scene where it's like, you know, terrorists are doing bad things and they're, they're about to kill a father in front of his children. And then boom, like yep. ACDC comes on and he's <laughs> yeah. just like, what's up guys? Mm-hmm. Check out my missiles. Boom, boom. Yeah. Um, Unabeam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was just really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really cool scene. And it's like, wow, Iron Man does kick ass. Sweet. Yeah. yeah that's the first time we really get to see Iron Man kick ass. Yeah. Is that yeah. first first village when he comes back and he saves the, the father and the son. and Golmira, blah, blah, blah. actually. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, he goes back yeah, to Golmira, Golmira, which is where exactly. Yinsen is from. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think somewhere in that lapse of time, the... Uh, the the head captor uh, in the opening scenes finds the wreckage of his suit from when he escapes uh, and finds the plans in which he he made that suit. Uh, and then he he calls the guy who hired him. And this guy happens to be dun, 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 dun. the nice teddy bear man <laughs> that, that accepted the award yes. for him in the opening sequence. Not Obadiah Stane. Yes, Obadiah Stane. <laughs> yeah. um, Jeffrey. Played by the amazing Jeff Bridges. And God, he's so good. And, and I was so saying, good. it's like, as a viewer going into this movie, the last thing we would have remembered Jeff Bridges from is 
the Big Lebowski. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's like, well, that's the dude, dude. Like, yeah. of course he's a good guy. Yeah. Of course he's a cool guy. And then he turns out to be a very, very evil guy. Yeah. yeah. Real piece of like, shit. Like, oh, real. <laughs> yeah. So, like, like, if you thought Tony Stark was the embodiment of the military industrial complex, this guy's like the mm-hmm. evil. This guy's the Dick Cheney of that <laughs> industrial yeah. complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, he's he, a uh, war monger. He is. He is somewhat of an iron monger. Iron monger. Yeah. Damn it, that's or the second iron time today. mongers, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, he uh, 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 hit the head captor. Um, calls up the guy who hired him and uh, said, "Dude, uses some awesome technology." That is completely unexplained <laughs> um, to like to like get the advantage and steal the suit and basically not have to pay him and just be a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Just like that's the ultimate villain thing. <laughs> and so like, like, oh, yeah, you want to make a deal with me, little minion? <laughs> Here is some of my evil. <laughs> um, and so. Um, so, yeah, he, he uses like basically it looks like uh, um, the, the Bluetooth uh, iPhone. Evil Bluetooth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's evil literally Bluetooth. what it is. Yeah, it, it's evil Bluetooth. He uses evil Bluetooth. <laughs> Some kind to, of to, sonic yeah. uh, Paralyzer. paralysis yeah. inducing sound yeah, waves. Yeah, that makes your something. that makes your veins pop out of your yeah. face and it's pretty shit. intense to watch. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah, I mean Robert Downey Jr. looks pretty, like shit on yeah, the couch when it happens awesome. to him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, so so yeah, so now so bad guy yeah. bad guy has Iron Man tech. Meanwhile, Tony Stark is kind of like, well, I can be Iron Man all the time. I can, I can do this. And uh, I, some, someone help me here. I'm kind of forgetting. Okay, so, so we're, we're at the part where. Well, so at hurt. this, at this <laughs> point, Tony is realizing Stark uh, has been selling under the table. No, he confronts. He Obadiah. confronts Obadiah, and Obadiah says, "You have to be stupid to think that we never sold anyone else." So he sends Pepper in to uh, download shipping uh, invoices, and she gets the info. And this is another one of those oh, teddy yeah. bear turns into scary yeah, yeah, bear yeah. situations with Obadiah. And uh, from that point, she goes back, and so uh, from that point on, Obadiah is hip to the fact that both Tony and Pepper mm-hmm. Potts are gay or hip to his game. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah. so basically now it's kind of like a race against the clock because Tony doesn't know that Obadiah knows, and so like he comes and uh, he steals the arc reactor out of Tony's chest, which yep. leaves him uh, basically paralyzed. Yo, yeah. he, but, he, but he has to use the evil Bluetooth. He has to yeah, use. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Obadiah yeah, uses why, the evil why, Bluetooth. Why, why didn't Tony Stark be like, dude? <laughs> I never saw the evil Bluetooth coming. Well, no. Who did you get? I'm the weapons designer here. Well, he had his, he, did, he had uh, you know Ralphie from they, a Christmas Story probably built it. Since oh, he, yeah, uh, exactly. Okay. No, but and it is you know what are you always going to be wearing your fucking little Bluetooth earpieces so that yeah. you don't get par- par- paralyzed <laughs> by a thing that only the people that work at your company have and yeah, sure, was sure. you know they told them that they couldn't build it anymore. Like though, didn't the EPA or something yeah. shut down that project? Anyhow, I digress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so. So he steals the arc out of Tony's heart or Tony's chest. Uh, Tony struggles to stay alive. He finds the one that Pepper Potts lovingly, the original arc, uh, put in a, a glass case that says uh, proof that Tony Stark does have a heart. Yeah. Uh, he plugs it back in. And uh, yeah, then he realizes he has to save Pepper and stop the uh, Ironmonger. So um, yeah, he Ironmonger. He makes Iron he Monger. makes uh, he goes and he finds that Obadiah Stane's created an even bigger suit of armor. Of course, uh, because if you're gonna build an evil invention, go it's gotta be real go gauche. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got You gotta go big or you gotta go home. It's a pretty <laughs> ridiculous suit. And uh, as uh, you pointed out, Toby, uh, the fight sequence, of course, very much based on uh, the RoboCop two. Yeah, John Fowler even said in a statement that he was inspired by the fight in RoboCop 2. And so that's where he took inspiration for mm-hmm. between Iron Man and Iron Monger duking it out on the, the highways of L.A. Yeah. And that was that's so cool. That's it yeah. is such, such a, a cool good, fight. And yeah. also, I think that's probably when, you know, this was all still just like rumors, I was, the whole Iron Man thing. I think that's probably the first photos I saw were from that. Oh, scene. really? I think that, oh, that was cool. like the first things that they showed. But anyhow, uh, fight ensues. Um, Iron Man defeats Ironmonger 
And uh, then we get to the end where we have uh, Agent Coulson has prepared a statement for Tony Stark to uh, address. Give him an alibi so people don't realize he's Iron Man. Yeah. And Uh, so they they give him a script to follow. And basically Tony Stark's like, yo, no, no, totally. I'll I'll follow your script. Yeah, no, totally. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'll do that. And then they ask him a question. He's like, you know what? No, fuck that. There will be no secret identity. (laughs) <laughs> I am Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. And and uh yeah, which really does in my opinion kick off an era of uh superheroes not hiding their secret identities. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we were talking about that. Which I mean, really granted, doesn't make a lot of sense for the Civil War thing. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. let's it's, not- it's in a different <laughs> different different uh, concept of Civil War than in the comic. But still, um so yes, uh that is basically the story of Iron Man. Um, you, did you, you, it was 2008, about yeah. a year or two before we met. Did you see it in the theater? I did see it in the theaters. I was actually on my way. Uh, I was about, I was pretty much done with classes that semester. And, uh, me and my buddy, Sean, and I think my brother, we all decided, or my, my buddy, Nick, uh, we just went to, and I had been super excited to see it because I was, I love John Favreau and I love uh, Robert Downey Jr. And Iron Man, Tony Stark was one of the, yeah. like Taj was one of the first superheroes that I read between that and the West Coast Avengers and, uh. Uh, some yeah. John Byrne Fantastic Four were some of the, the earliest stuff I ever read. Uh, and just to see this movie and uh, be incredibly uh, satisfied and impressed with uh, Favreau and the Marvel team's ability to stay, I think, the closest to the source material than, than I would say most comic movies tend to be. A lot of them want to deviate. They want to make their own thing. But, you know, Marvel Studios is about, well, how do we adapt Marvel comics to right. now? I was impressed with that. And then, you know, literally ending with them mentioning they, they wanted to make an Avengers movie, which I just, you couldn't tell the five-year-old in me to shut up because he was screaming right. so oh, yeah. much. Yeah. When- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, like, because the concept of, of an origin film for a superhero in comparison to a comic book, you can get through kind of an origin tale in like two pages. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe six panels each page. Uh, in a movie, that's a really difficult task because... It, or you just leapfrog and you go like, oh, this is when I realized this is what I had to do. This is what I did to get there. Yeah. And then you leapfrog to, and now I'm really good at what I'm doing, which I think is like what a lot of the movies end up having to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, they didn't so much do that in this one. They got to show. Well, uh, I mean, they, they did in that middle sequence, jumping from the whole, I'm shutting down the weapons to finding out that his his business partner is really evil. There's a nice long, like, what is it? Like, like half an hour at least of sort of him testing out his gear. Yeah. No, that's um, what I'm saying, though. Wonder, like, wonderful CGI. Yeah, I man. Mean, oh, man. So it's wonder- some of the best and practical movie. effects because, I mean, that, yeah, that's one yeah. of the best things about this is like, yeah, yeah, they use a lot of practical effects to really kind of highlight you know, the crazy superhero technology that, that he's building. And it's just, it's really, uh, if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, it's, it's really awesome to watch. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, it was easy for them to do it with something innate like steel yeah. or exactly. metal and, and not have it have to be someone's face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and it's, and it's a pretty quick, I mean, it really, you sort of jump from, he created this thing to escape his captors to he's refining it to be pretty awesome to now he's flying it and, and finding some flaws in his design to like, now he can go and kick somebody's ass with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all within the span of like 20, 30 minutes. I, I didn't really time that scene. Right. But that's- I mean, it's a really important scene and it's a really fun scene. I think that's where a lot of the fun in this movie co- sort of comes from. Absolutely. Just, if you're into to, to gadgets and mechanical things, and, <laughs> and- I mean, like for me personally, <laughs> uh, that's like my job and God, I loved it so much just yeah. watching it again I don't think I'll ever uh, not like it no, I don't think no. I'll ever not like that scene and that's the idea like one of the fundamental uh, characteristics of Tony Stark's uh, like what makes him a superhero as opposed to just being a guy that puts on a metal suit. Yeah. Like I think kind of the, uh, the expedited nature of that progression uh, is supposed to really, really, really shine a light on that. Like yeah. that is how he operates. Yeah. Like he yeah. gets shit done. He's like, here's the problem. These are the steps and there's the solution. Like yeah. that's, that's supposed to be like his superpower even beyond just being a rich, 
rich dude because yeah. you know like they don't really talk about that with Batman in any great detail as far as I know maybe yeah, 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 yeah. but like that that is a big part of what Tony Stark is he's a super intelligent dude yeah. that happens to be very wealthy because of the intelligence of his lineage yeah. and then on top of that he also built this suit so I mean, now he yeah, can and, like and, now he and, can and take once that again with the, the field with the military industrial complex right. he's sort of Tony Stark, not Iron Man, but Tony Stark himself is the embodiment of uh, the American, um, uh, the American in- industrial prominence, I guess. Yeah, you yeah. Know, through technology specifically, right. you know. It's and like also, after World War II, we we really got to task to build things, and it's just kind of right. uh, yeah. It's kind of he's the embodiment of that. It's yeah, like our yeah. our technology makes us great. And, and, uh, and you know he he's coming in to play in a time when inventors really weren't a mm-hmm. thing anymore. You know, whereas you have uh, you know these older times where you've got people like uh, Tesla or Edison or you know whoever. Uh, then you get to the era of when these comics were coming out, and it's more like think tanks and like groups that that invent things. Yeah. But like the idea that there's this guy that's an inventor. You yeah. know, yeah, that and was he's like famous a really, on that on like exactly. basically the fact that he's a scientist is like an interesting concept even yeah. today yeah. yeah no that's not something that was as prominent anymore so i think that that was really yeah. captivating too um anyhow yes uh it was an amazing film fucking cleaned up in the box offices uh it made uh it was like i said earlier it was spent 140 to make it they made uh worldwide uh 585 million dollars on this film uh so yeah. obviously and uh, you know even before that that uh uh, came in, they knew that this was going to be the leapfrog because we didn't talk about it. But at the end of the credits, the yeah. first of what would become the legendary Marvel post credits yeah. uh, scenes. Yeah. And, and still probably the most important. I, well, one. you know, at the time, that didn't happen before. I mean, that was the no. First. It, it. I mean, you'd have like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but at the time, just, just uh, in terms of like superhero cinema. Yeah, yeah. Ju- yeah. Ju- just to get that inkling of like, oh my god, that's like an agent of Shield, and this is well, this is going down, son. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like they're assembling. This is uh, this is a bigger universe. Yeah. Uh, things are connected. It was just uh, just that in and of itself was mind blowing. I mean, yeah. Th- 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 then you sort of knew like, oh, that's why they. You know, dumped in uh, you know one hundred and twenty million dollars, which is right. kind of modest compared yeah. to like what they could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really that was it. That was yeah. the beginning. No, that was it. And so, for those of you that aren't aware of exactly what we're speaking of, uh, Tony Stark gets home. Jarvis, his home security system at that time, tells him some wacky stuff, and he's like, "What's going on?" And out of the shadows steps Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, uh, a role that he would continue to play throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, but this was the first appearance. This was yeah. it. This was this was him saying. Uh, we're gonna call to, we're gonna, this is gonna all come together and we're gonna culminate all of these different uh, characters into an Avengers film. And yep. uh, for me, as, as someone, and I know this is true for you too, Toby, that, uh, that was uh, one of the most exciting moments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I mean, I think just like, so at that point, we've had years of, of, superhero films where we, you know, have been having to watch these origin stories and everybody's kind of mm-hmm. on their own. And I think, you know, for most, fans of comic books there's always in the inkling in the back of your mind that you want to see these guys like team up but between like all the rights problems and you know just people maybe egos not wanting to do stuff together you know marvel hunkered down and said as a studio our priority is to create marvel's universe in a cinematic form so uh, i i've always heard that that post credit sequence was something that they did on kind of in the 11th hour that they weren't sure if they were going to do it but Mm -hmm. they kind of decided to roll the dice and they had uh brian michael bendis who was you know, a huge Marvel writer. He just recently switched to DC, but he, you know, he wrote the Avengers and Daredevil created Ultimate Spider-Man. He created mm-hmm. Miles Morales. Uh, he, they, he, they had him write that kind of final sequence and then they, they shot it in a day. They had Samuel Jackson come by. And the reason they chose Samuel Jackson is because um, in a recent book called the Ultimates, which was kind of an updated right. version of the Avengers, uh, they the Nick Fury looked exactly like Samuel Jackson. Yeah. It might as well have been okay. modeled. After. Yeah. And I mean, Samuel Jackson always loved that. He'd been asked yeah. about it. Uh, and uh, they, he said yes, and he was super, super excited about it. So I mean that, yeah. And the and rest that is history, it. man. Because the rest is history. Yeah, 
that kicked it all off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've we've run long already, but uh, yeah, the, so Iron Man won uh, 2008, uh, and that really is the one that kicked it all off and started this uh, amazing lineage of Marvel films that uh, followed. Uh, so, yes, yeah, stick around. We've got more. We're definitely going to touch on a lot of the issues that come up in Iron Man 2. Uh, so check out this beat. I uh, hope you enjoy, Justin. I, I, I wonder what samples you're going to use, use for the movies. I know. I, I'm... I, I, um, There's so many good. I don't want to so spoil good stark it. Stark one-liners. <laughs> there are a lot of good one-liners. Yeah. So uh, check this out, and we'll be right back with uh, segment number two for Electric Boogaloo Part Two. Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> God bless Iron Man. God bless America. God, 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 God bless Iron Man. God bless America. God, 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 God bless Iron Man. God bless America. God bless Iron Man. God bless. God, 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 God bless Iron Man. God bless. God, 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 God bless Iron Man. God bless Iron Man. God bless Iron Man. God bless America. Iron Man, God bless America. Well, um, we're back All right. for, for part two Woo! of Electric Boogaloo part two. Uh, and uh, yes, already discussing uh, some, some of the uh, history of Robert Downey Jr. And uh, yeah, his, yeah. his legacy. Uh, yeah, he really did uh, fall out for quite a while there. Um, it was It's unfortunate. He was always so talented. Uh, I think my first exposure, obviously, would be uh, Weird Science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what else. Less than zero. Less than zero. But I don't think I saw that super early uh, on. I think that probably. It was, it was really, it was, it was the movie where it's like, oh, this guy can act. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Once you see that. Yeah. But also, like, I think that's a, a good parallel. I mean. I also think that's right? the movie it's where it started. Tragic. Apparently, he yeah. got really involved because of doing that movie, Right. So. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys I have mean, ever he heard. really went deep into the research. Yeah. Yeah. Of that character for that movie. Well, <laughs> even beyond that, I don't know if you guys have heard, like, his personal story. But, like, his dad was a hardcore addict and basically got his son to participate with him. And wow. so it was like a part of his yeah. home yeah. life. And so already that's a pattern that's set when you get out into the real world and then he's an actor. And so suddenly you have this, uh, d you know, disposable income. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, what, what can you expect? And also just, it's that era. It's that eighties era of young starlets that yeah. uh, fall prey to like all of these different things. And also it's the era of cocaine. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's the era of all these pharmaceuticals just uh, to washing through these communities. And so, yeah. so yeah, this really is, it's a great story to hear that uh, Robert Downey Jr. has that come up and said, yes, he is yeah. clean and sober now. And, and then he really does clean and sober. I mean, and, yeah. and it's, it was actually perfect. Another mm -hmm. perfect casting yeah. uh, for him to play Tony Stark. Or it's like he he knows how to be a sleazeball. Yeah, yeah. Like he knows yeah, how to play like a high functioning alcoholic genius who can yeah. you know build a <laughs> suit of iron and you know. Uh, new technologies yeah. to uh, well, I th I think put John a Favre magnet in his chest. Yeah, I think John Favreau, <laughs> you know, kind of saw the writing on the wall where you know here you have a character uh, like Iron Man, you know, successful and every, at one point then completely falls because of the bottle and his addiction, uh, but then has to pick himself up 
uh, and and reclaim his mantle and become the hero that we all kind of know him to be. And in yeah. that regard, I think he saw Robert Downey Jr. as a guy who was hungry for that second chance to show that you know he yeah, he yeah. had the chops to be a, a great actor yeah. as, as oh, he definitely. was before, mm-hmm. but just to like be better with himself yeah. too. And man, it, it is it's a great yeah. Hollywood it, story has a great. Yeah, Story and, in general. And, and like the personal weight. I mean, just no the the audiences who went in to see Iron Man already knew that story about right. It. So it just like it it carries a lot of weight mm-hmm. to see this person who kind of is a self made uh, individual who can uh, sort of overcome any odds, um, and to have Robert Downey Jr. with his story come into that was. Choice, yeah, choice yeah. casting, it's great, yeah. So, so it knocks it out of the park with 2008. Uh, it was the number two film in box offices that year. Uh, and then, uh, they continue with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I think what, uh, what, what is the, the chronological? I think you said the next one was uh, just a couple months later, Incredible Hulk came Incredible out Hulk. that same year. Yeah. Yes. And then two years later, Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2. So, yeah. so really it is yeah. just like, boom, Iron Man 2. And that's what we're really here to talk about now. Uh, that's 2010, uh, May 7th, 2010 to be exact. Uh, budget Ooh. of 200 million. Yeah, there we go. So, so they, <laughs> they, up they up it. Another 80. Yeah. They, Let's they, just they throw another it, well, 80 million at it. On top Pro of 60 because of 140. Right. So uh, opening weekend, it makes 128 million and over the course of its run grosses worldwide 623 million, um, 312 domestic. But um, but yes. uh, And almost immediately starts getting negative reviews Uh, almost immediately. uh, And I think that it is something that uh, did we touch on it in the actual recording or you were talking just about that? Like, Oh no, we, we didn't talk about it in the recording, but you were talking about that idea of like, uh, anything that's new obviously is going to be more exciting. Like yeah. just that human condition. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of, of they like new things. They like fun things. They like the beginning of things. Right. It's kind of like you were kind of mentioning the idea of like yeah. him building the tech and trying the tech. Everybody likes that. Despite people say the criticism of origin stories, right. we as a human culture love the beginning of a story. It'll never be more exciting than the first time or, you know, right. for some people yeah. and everything. And, uh, so they have that problem having to do this the second time around. Uh, but I think the other thing that people kind of were, were expecting was just kind of still, I guess, maybe just more fun. I feel like this movie right. definitely, and I was talking with you earlier, uh, definitely has a little less of the uh, continuous action that the first movie had. There was a lot of character building in this movie. There's yeah. a lot more drama. It carries a lot more weight because one of the major plot lines is that Tony Stark is dying because of the device in his chest mm-hmm. that's keeping him yeah. alive. So it's this ridiculous paradox, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But um yeah, it, it definitely like there there is a lot more uh, de- as you said development going on in this movie. Uh, just in terms of like Tony Stark going from being just kind of a smarmy asshole who now has this great uh, device that helps him protect the planet uh, to being a hero or someone that that actually could be part of a team. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, normally what we do at this point in the podcast is we have our guest uh, in the same fashion that uh, Justin uh, gave us a, a quick quick, uh, yeah. quick synopsis. Of of a quick synopsis of uh, the first one. Uh, if maybe if you'll just kind of take us through the plot yeah. and uh, anything that's specific that you wanted to touch on, go Ooh. ahead and just like you can branch out from there. Uh, I'll and try I'm to, sure uh, that Justin and I, we, we are uh, notorious interjectors. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, just uh, yeah. Take us through. I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to rush through it so we can do get to the, uh, the point, but uh, Iron Man two starts off uh, not too far from Iron Man one. I'd say within the course of uh, about a year, maybe like six to eight months uh tony stark has basically privatized world peace uh, and he's just become an american icon uh and we kind of see this parallel in russia of this uh dude with his father uh and his father just is like miserable basically dying and he's like gives him some kind of message in russian to like take care of the issue <laughs> and this old man dies and mickey rourke yells con mickey rourke is the son by the way he's like yeah! And uh, and then it gets really dramatic. And then we see a parallel of uh, Mickey Rourke's character, uh, Anton, or he's Anton Vanko? Yes. He, yes. Oh, wait, no, he's he's, he's Ivan. 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 Yeah, Anton is the father. He's Ivan Vanko, uh, which was kind of, the, I think they combined Crimson 
Dynamo and and Whiplash in this movie. They yeah, yeah they merge the two characters. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah. Kind and of he, they have like the Russian uh, robot guy, yeah. and then also the guy that had whips. Yeah. kind of. <laughs> uh, and so he kind of has this his own arc reactor scene, very you know basically paralleling the first scene where Tony Stark was building the arc reactor with the ensign. He's doing uh, Vanko's doing it in his house, you know, with his bird. Uh, he loves so much. Uh, yes. And, you know, in the background, you see it, the, the time, the time is passing as you see all these more of these articles and news reports. And he successfully builds a uh, arc reactor, a mini arc reactor, which nobody on the planet has been right. able to do. Uh, and we kind of flash forward to see back in America that Tony Stark is kind of uh, called on by the Congress to give up the technology to benefit the American people. Uh, More of the he, military industrial exactly. complex. Yeah. But he, he takes responsibility and says no. He's like, I am the person that stepped in uh, because I felt there was a need and I'm going to be the guy that's going to do it and no one's going to stop me. I have privatized me. world yeah, peace. I privatized yeah, world you peace. You should be thanking stop me. Stop me now. <laughs> we also get our introduction to the new roadie uh, played yes. by um, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Yeah, um, which is like the real... Power of Marvel Studios. They managed to somehow turn Terrence Howard <laughs> into, Don into Don Cheadle. They just, uh, I don't know how they did it. It's movie well, I, magic. I tell you how they did it. It's that it's that Disney money because that's something that we did not touch on. Really, is that uh, between these two films uh, was the Disney Marvel merger uh, that was in August thirty first of two thousand nine. Uh, reportedly, a four point two four billion dollars. Uh, so so quite a lot of money. However. Um, Paramount did still distribute this film, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America. So uh, uh, Disney did Iron Man 3 and the Avengers. And then, of course, now as we move on to uh, Phase 2 and on, uh, it's all Disney. Oh, but, uh, Disney. but yeah, $4.24 billion. Yeah. They yeah. basically made it back already. Yeah. I, Without a doubt, they made it back. So I don't know how that, like, I, I don't that know the money. Disney merger sort of managed to get rid of Terrence Howard. No, I don't uh, know if it got rid of I, him. I, I, in fact, if anything, I think a lot they of had, factors they had did. more money. And so I think I read a quick article. I was just like, uh, I remember uh, Bethany earlier asked me, it's like, wasn't like Terrence Howard in the first one? And I'm like, oh shit, he yeah. was. Like, yeah. why didn't? He, why wasn't he in the second one? So you know, I asked uh, Siri, and Siri is <laughs> like. Terrence Howard required too much money. Yeah. <laughs> Are you s- <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you no, no, that no, money. Was, I, that. But, um, I was like, man, she, yeah, she could have yeah, got um, deep. <laughs> yeah, but uh, apparently for the first movie, um, there was strife for, 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 for and the first uncertainty. Iron Man. <laughs> For the first Iron Man, um, Terrence Howard was a star actor. He had just won an, an, an Oscar and um, he uh, for Hustle and Flow, uh, and he was also in Crash with uh, yes with Don Cheadle who ended with Don up Cheadle, replacing yeah. him. Um, but, and, um, and and Sam yeah, Rockwell but, but, too, right? But, so they they paid him a lot of money to be in the first Iron Man, mm-hmm. an equal amount. To Robert Downey Jr. Well, because of the success of Iron Man 1, um, the, and maybe some behind the scenes uh, issues between Terrence Howard and, and, <laughs> right. the, and the crew and, and the, the cast. Other people some kind involved. of ego. Yeah. Terrence uh, Howard maybe. and everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. The, um, uh, you know, the filmmakers got back to him, the production company got back to him, to Terrence Howard and said, hey, we can only pay you one eighth of what we paid you for the first film. Are right. you cool with that? And he's like, hell no. Gave me my money. And they're like, well, the film can be successful without you. Right. So... Really you know, central. in or out. And Terrence Howard didn't play the long game because had he played the long game, he probably would have made more. Probably. Um, yeah, because- and you know what? I bet that like uh, Robert Downey's pay got bumped quite a bit and maybe oh, yeah, that was part exactly. of it too. Like maybe now all of a sudden yeah. he's making as much as Terrence Howard and he's like, well, what are you doing paying him more and not me more? And they're like, well, now we have to. Like he's proven that yeah. he's yeah. Iron Man. We need him now. Yeah, yeah. we need him now. Well, he would have sucks. Def- yeah, him, but... Uh, uh, but I mean, he definitely did stand up for them because apparently when Avengers 1 came out, uh, a, a bunch of the cast was very underpaid. Uh, and Robert Downey Jr. was the highest paid actor on that movie. But yeah. when they made the second one, he literally kind of took a a mini strike and was like, I'm not going to do this to make um, to make sure that everyone else is getting paid like 
exactly what I'm getting yeah, paid. Right. Uh, which turned Scott Johansson at that point, uh, that year to the highest paid actress. Everybody yeah, got yeah. compensated, uh, you know, for that. So, I mean, yeah, the, the long game. I mean, was- th- th- this is all, you know, and, and this is all sort of the Hollywood machine sort of playing into why you would even want to make a sequel. And, right. and uh, initially this was scheduled as a three film series. Yeah. 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 So th- this was pitched to Robert Downey Jr. and Ter- How- Terrence Howard as a three film deal. Um, you know, but I don't blame Robert Downey Jr. for wanting more money for the yeah. second one. No, and of course not. I, I, and do I blame Marvel for cutting Terrence Howard's face? Yeah, an eighth. An eighth <laughs> of what you originally made is kind is of that, an insult. Is that what happened? Do yeah. They, they honestly did try to cut yeah. him down to I, an eighth. I, yeah. At this Not point, I would definitely say a lot of that is going to go under who was Marvel's CEO at the time, uh, a gentleman named Perlmutter. Uh, who was still kind of running the Marvel uh, division, basically for a huge portion of, I think, phase one and phase two, was dictating the terms. And he was con- consistently trying to cut back on money and yeah. funds and seeing how much he could get away without paying. This dude got so involved and pissed off so many people that he almost made Kevin Feige, who basically is, you know, right now oh, the yeah. head of like Marvel, the Marvel Studios, historian, yeah. quit. <laughs> Because yeah. they were doing Civil War and he didn't want to pay Robert Downey Jr. to be in Civil War. He's like, we don't need him. And he's like, we need Robert Downey. This yeah. is the story. Yeah. And you like, and th- so that's the point. The guy was just like, well, let's think about money. But, you know, Kevin Feige, let's think about story, which I think has always been a success of, of Marvel is really yeah. giving the story what, what it needs. But yeah, Don Cheadle, like, he, I don't doubt at some point if he's like, well, we'll just cut his thing because he's not even the big guy. It's, it's Iron Man, not War Machine. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Don Cheadle does a great job, mm-hmm. is the reality. Not that okay. Terrence Howard didn't. Terrence Howard did a great job, too. Yeah. Uh, but but ultimately, it's it not ju- It story. just sucks that there was that, that behind-the-scenes sort of bureaucracy that, right. oh, that sort of forced him out. I yeah. mean, you know, because he could have been... I mean, uh, like, he started his own production company and, and you know, uh, he has his own television show, Empire, that's really... Successful, but I think as a Hollywood player, that was it. I mean, I don't re- really remember anything. Yeah, that's true. Post that, or, or Terrence Howard is sort Man. of in Hollywood movies, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, and maybe it's it just pissed off Terrence Howard, where he didn't want to play true. the Hollywood game and, you know, just sort of just yeah. say, well, we'll go to TV, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, it's just, that's just a little side note. Yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy to think about what really happened there. Uh, so uh, we we meet uh, new James Rhodey and, and Pepper's back and and General Stern played uh, hilariously and wonderfully by uh, Gary Shandling, rest in peace. Yeah, uh, who ends up getting to play a role in in Winter Soldier, which was really yeah. dope. They have a great callback with him, and then we also meet Justin Hammer, who will be one of two villains, uh, including uh, Mickey Rourke's Vanko. Yeah. And uh, interesting fact, I don't know if I got to, I mentioned this, but Sam Rockwell was actually in contention to play Tony Stark first time around. That makes sense. Yeah, he actually yeah. I, I had an audition to play uh, Tony Stark, but you know Favreau liked him so much. I think he definitely thought about bringing him back on, and and, yeah. he, and he's great because Justin Hammer is really awesome. If, yeah. if you know if uh, Jeff Bridges is uh, what's it, Obadiah Stane is just kind of the ultimate like you know gentleman uh, businessman warmonger. He's like trying to be the goofy, but like I'm hip but not hip right. like yes. businessman. Uh, and he hams it up, and he's pretty much awesome in, in all his scenes. That whole dance sequence. Well, well, we'll get to that. When he comes out at stage and like the Stark Expo, and he's like, "Guess what, guys? I have robots too. Let's dance." And he's like dancing with the robots. Yeah, it's, um, oh, that's so great. You actually mentioned yeah, something I should have so mentioned great. before they have this court hearing. Uh, Iron Man has this really crazy drop Drench intro uh, yeah. intro where he drops I mean and I think though I think the movie starts out with that where it's like basically it's yeah. like you hear some ACDC you're like oh shit it's an Iron well, Man we get, movie we get yeah. that we get that uh, Ivan and Anton Vanko like, yeah, like yeah, cut yeah. scene you, you, and then we see the, Iron Man the and then first. it goes yeah. straight into yes. this uh, but basically <laughs> Tony uh, has this really dramatic entrance pops down in this like fair which is you find out that uh, his dad, Howard, had created something called the Stark Expo, which was supposed to bring the brightest and best minds of the world together to create ultimate science utopia. Right. And uh, he wants to honor, Tony wants to honor his father's legacy by, um, and legacy, there's going to be a key word, guys, with this whole mm-hmm. thing. He wants to honor legacy. his dad's legacy by continuing the Stark Expo. Uh, <laughs> and 
also on, when he kind of finishes his big dog and pony show with a bunch of ladies with arc reactors and <laughs> fireworks and ACDC, you yeah. see that Tony's basically uh, giving himself diabetes tests, which are not for diabetes, but for uh, palladium poisoning. Um, and his blood toxicity level is rising dramatically. So we also kind of realize early on that Tony Stark is possibly dying yeah. uh, from the arc reactor that is also saving his life, which you mentioned. Yeah. Flash forward, he gets a summons, has to go to court. Uh, we meet Justin Hammer, who is a rival to Tony Stark, and Hammer is trying to develop suits. That's what the government wants to do. Everybody's seen how strong Tony Stark's Iron Man suit is. So now everybody wants to be on the same military yeah. level of creating technology that puts the makes the human being the weapon. Yeah. Um and uh Tony does a, a funny show where he shows that literally nobody is close. No country yeah. is close to even like even creating anything similar to, to Iron Man tech. And he kind of tells brushes off the government says you 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 have you need me yeah. so yeah. I'm in control. Yeah. You like you you can't have my tech. You yeah. can't put bureaucracy into me being a hero. Exactly. And 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 that's I mean that's pretty much that's pretty much it. It's like he is the military industrial complex, and the actual <laughs> former military industrial complex is like, well, what about us? Yeah. Right. And he's like, no, nah, guys, sorry, I- I'm it now. No <laughs> nah, worries. Nah, nah. I-, I got this. I got, yeah, this. I got and, this. And and I think another great thing about that scene, uh, and we talked about this a lot, was the jump in technology. Whereas in the first Iron Man, we still see flip phones. Mm-hmm. In this one, they forego any kind of like current technology, and Tony Stark just has a little rectangle of plastic yeah. that he uses to commandeer the TVs in Literally the courtroom. Hacks into hacks world into governments the TVs. and that gets their security footage. And I think this is a smart move because then you're not dating yourself with technology anymore. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, Tony Stark is just really advanced. Like yeah. nobody has this yet. Obviously, yeah. Tony Stark does because that's just how badass he yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's uh, him saying like, screw you, I'm going to be Tony Stark. And then he's like, ah, let's go on vacation. <laughs> Pretty so, much. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, well he right before that he does have meet with Pepper uh, and he, you can see that he's giving away like all his like oh yeah stuff and he gives away a whole collection of like world renowned paintings to the Boy Scouts of America because you and, know that's what you yeah you know when you're rich and you have you shit do. you can just throw away that's what you do you Maria Kondo it and you just give everything yeah, away right uh, but Pepper's getting really stressed out she's like what the hell are you doing. Uh, and Tony says, I do no longer want to run my company. I want to give it to somebody I trust. And the only person I trust and have in my life is you. Uh, and so he makes her CEO of Stark. And so she's kind of like bewildered, but she accepts the job. Yeah. And uh, we see the signing of the documents to hand over the company. And that's when we meet Natalie Rushman, who is Natalie not Rushman. Natalie Rushman. Uh, uh, she's... Uh, she Romanoff, is Natasha, Natasha Romanoff, Romanoff, aka uh, Scarlett Johansson, aka Black Widow. Black Widow, and this is her first appearance in the MCU. Yeah, this yeah, is the first yeah. time that we are aware of this agent that yeah. will end up being a lasting character, and they are in pre-production of the Black Widow yeah. film. It's also currently. the first uh, female Marvel superhero of this yeah. universe that we see. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely true. And what's kind of the most badass part about that, in my opinion, is that it is. Uh, the first female superhero who has no actual superhuman abilities. She's just the fucking badass. She's just like, (laughs) she just knows how to fight. Like nobody's business is super smart. Uh, knows how to hack. Yeah. You know, (laughs) if that's still a thing, I don't think it is. I think, yeah, I think that, yeah, I think it technically be freaking. Um, but no, not even that anymore. Anyhow. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Scarlet Joe, Scar Joe, the yeah, Scarge. Yeah. <laughs> um, a very young Scarjo too, yeah. which is like kind of yeah, but as not as young as I thought because I was like, oh man, this was right after Ghost World, and it wasn't because that was more like two thousand one, two thousand two, and yeah. Lost in Translation so was, uh, later, was like two thousand three. Yeah, and, so and we're talking Iron Man two two thousand ten. Yeah, two thousand ten. So yeah. she's been around for a sec at this point, um, but yeah, like this is. Well, this is what got her her franchise. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so yeah, way to go for her. And actually, I, I think this is kicked her off as somebody that could be like a badass yeah, that, female uh, protagonist. She did a lot of art films. And so yeah. nobody really kind of saw her as that, as that asshole. Right. And the thing is, actually, I was telling you guys earlier, uh, she wasn't actually the original cast. They had actually casted Emily Blunt. Uh, was actually going to be Black Widow. She had already signed the contracts and was good to go, but she was working on the film Gulliver Tra- Gulliver's Travels with Jack Black, 
and it went over schedule uh, and she had to drop out. And I mm. think Scarlett Johansson really wanted the role and she vied for it and she got it. Uh, and now the rest is history, which is crazy. It's almost a very similar situation that happened with um, X-Men because Hugh yeah. Jackman was not supposed to play Wolverine. It was a gentleman yeah. named Doug Ray Scott. Yeah. And he couldn't, he was doing Mission Impossible 2 and then X-Men. He, the Mission Impossible 2 schedule went way too long and he had to drop out. And the rest is history because now everybody knows who Jackman is. Yeah, that's, that's Logan. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So Emily Blunt is, is she's the new Mary Poppins, right? She's yes. the new Mary Poppins. So there you go. Like, I, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard great things. So yeah. way to go, Emily Blunt. Uh, you're getting a shout out even though you weren't in the movie. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, so so then at, the, at, the, at that point in the story, uh, what, where are we? Uh, where? so we're, she's signing off the company and, uh, they're kind of in this funny, like exercise training right. room and Tony's kind of doing his little research on her and he really likes her cause she's cute <laughs> and pretty, but then she kind of like whoops happy Hogan's ass in like a matter of minutes. So they're kind of like weirded out. Uh, but he, he gives the company to pepper and then that's when they go to Monaco, uh, right. on, on some kind of vacation or at least some kind of press tour to say that they've handed over the company to, to pepper pots. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I was at comic con the year that they kind of released the first teaser for Iron Man two. And I remember Favreau talking about, he wanted to have the very like James Bond sequence where, you know, mm -hmm. like the racing in Italy, which is mm -hmm. a big thing. Yeah. So that's why they kind of had like that, that yeah. sequence in, in Monaco. And Tony's basically realizing the poisonous blood is getting more intense and he's kind of just willing to do whatever he wants yeah. to do just to he be wants alive. To have a blast. Exactly. And he runs into Justin Hammer and uh, Christine Everhart, who's played by Leslie Bibb, who actually dates uh, uh, Sam Rockwell. I don't know if they're married yet, but they were they're together. Interesting. Yeah. And um, he blow brushes them off, them off, decide to like go go racing. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in a race car today. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> that's, that's, he's like I'm, why I Dubs? I, can I race am cars. Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> why I own a race car if you're not yeah. going to drive it? Yeah. I think is what he says. I think there's a scene too. He like pushes yeah. the driver. Yeah, the driver. Like, yeah, the yeah, the driver like throws his helmet. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a really hilarious little moment. But yeah, he like gets in this race car and just like starts driving around the track, and out of nowhere, dun, dun, like, like dun. race car driving isn't like a really d detailed and uh, long practice to sort of get good at, and you know, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Tony Stark. Tony Stark he's Tony Stark. Hey, look, man. He's, he's really, by the seat of your pants. Yeah. That's the only way to He's, he's nah. like, look, dude, I made a suit that is fast as Seriously. a jet. So I'm, I can operate this car. I'm really smart. <laughs> Listen, guys. <laughs> I know I know what you say, skills. I'm a really intelligent dude. Uh, no, so so yeah, and and I think like just flashing back, uh we uh, this was a Easter egg that you pointed out yep. to me, Toby, when uh, Ivan Vanko gets his uh, his passport and all this stuff uh, so that he can get to America or Monaco, uh, Monaco. Sorry. Yeah. Monaco. Um, the guy that he's buying it from is a member of the 10 rings from Ooh. the first film. So uh, it's kind of carrying on that legacy that somehow they are playing a hand in all of this. Yeah. yeah the um, terrorist ring has got a vendetta against Tony Stark. Now. Right. And ultimately is like the terrorist group that's cited in Iron Man three, which we find out is fake, but there might still be more to that story there in the future. Who knows? Because it could be a thread that leads us to the real Mandarin at some point. Because yeah. a lot of us, a lot of us fanboys, were pretty sad that the Mandarin was uh, fake. Was yeah. fake because it could have been really cool. I think they totally make one more Iron Man movie. I'm kind of surprised Robert Downey Jr. hasn't really shown interest. Right. To be truthfully honest, I was like, you, you can make like one more. Yeah, come on. But <laughs> no, I mean, I would understand if they didn't. But yeah. anyhow, so. Uh, yes. so uh, they're in Monaco. He's racing this car. Uh, there's this suspicious gentleman behind the scenes, you know, wearing the security outfit, but his chest is protruding a little too <laughs> dramatically. Yeah. It's got yeah. like a box underneath And his he somehow jumper. bypasses all security and then walks onto the track, turns some button on, and his shirt just dissolves away. And it's Ivan Vanko and his crazy homemade arc reactor suit with these insane bull whips. Mm -hmm. And he just starts slicing the race cars left and right. Which they, is so badass. It's yeah. fucking cool. Like, it's so badass. It's like the light. first one. Yeah. Is see, just... and, and, and this, and this is my argument for the whole, like the validity of this whole movie. Yeah. It's like, there's such a strong, uh, comic booky 
uh, yes. villain yes. in yeah. this in this film. He's got yeah, yeah, whips, yeah. electrified yeah. whips, electrified like, whips, awesome. which seem like a ridiculous weapon. But the more I watch this movie, the more I think, man, that's really smart. Like nobody else has time to do it. He's like using the most arcane, simplistic, like just I'm gonna catch you with this rope and electrify you. And, and meanwhile, people are using guns. He's like cutting off their gun barrels. They're like, shit, what do I do now? <laughs> He's like, I've still yeah. got my whips. So so yeah, yeah but it, it, it is it, it's beautiful. It, it, if he's scene. within whip range. You're done, son. It's a beautiful <laughs> um, scene, and and is uh, one of the many uh, cool guys. Don't look back at their explosions, explosions yes. yeah. while yeah. they walk away. <laughs> moments. There's a lot of those moments in this movie. Oh man, I think a franchise in general, I, <laughs> yeah. all of Marvel yeah. universe. <laughs> but oh, yeah. uh, Tony's car finally comes up, and he slices Tony's car in half, and that's when Pepper uh, sees she gets Happy's attention, and they make a break. To, to save Tony yeah, and, and carrying the, the Iron Man suitcase, a special suitcase that will be used later on. Uh, they bre- they bust onto the uh, the track itself. They <laughs> they catch up to Tony and then just rail <laughs> Vanko into the wall with the yeah, car. It's, pretty it's a pretty funny sequence. It's a great scene. Yeah, man. and yeah. Tony and Pepper just trying to gra- like hand off this case, <laughs> and it's not happening until Vanko like cuts Happy's car in half with his whip. Yeah, and then Pepper slides the suitcase to him. He kicks it up, and then he proceeds to put on uh, Iron Man suitcase armor. Uh, Taj and I were talking earlier. That was, I think, one of the coolest fucking yeah. moments oh, I yeah. have seen. In the, I mean, the Iron Man uh, gear up transformation scene. Like yeah. the first movie has all the cool mechanical yeah. gears and uh, robots and stuff, sort of making this machine, and uh, that is awesome to see. Um, you know, for 20 yeah. minutes, it, it captures your attention, but nothing's cooler than see that, that yeah, case. Yeah. yeah, just transform, I mean, yeah, spread over yeah. and like pull over. And that, 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 that was literally there. The filmmakers sort of like, oh yeah, Transformers right. movies. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, we got some tech for you, son. I bet um, that if you go on YouTube, you could find someone that's compiled the like Iron Man gear up scenes yeah, and like yeah. ranked them like <laughs> best. Yeah, anyhow. Yeah. Um, it's, well, but it is a beautiful a cool, moment. Such, Which, yeah, it was aw- and what was really cool is that that was a real big throwback because in the in the era that Taj was talking about that he was reading Iron Man in the, in the late 80s, Tony, one of Tony's primarily way to get on his suit was in a suitcase. Yeah. So Favreau, who was just doing an amazing job of really calling back and hearkening to those stories, you know, did another great update of it and, you know, kind of did a callback to, to the suitcase armor. Uh, and it's, it's awesome, man. Yeah. And, no, there's just so much attention to detail yeah. in regards to the source material. And even and, seeing like the Mach one, like, yeah. the, like the homemade armor in the first one. I never thought I would ever see that. No, also. no, it was beautiful. And that was, what was great about this film. Um, and actually, uh, a number of years back, I went on a road trip uh, to California and went to Disneyland and it was while they had the Iron Man exhibit. Oh, nice. And so I got to see all those suits up close and personal. I was just like, man, I can't believe that they made this. Like they fabricated <laughs> this fucking suit. Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah. incredible. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, then we realize at this time that uh, there is someone else out there that has the same yeah. capabilities. And I think what we really realized, cause you know, I've always been kind of conflicted about the Iron Man idea. Like, okay, so what? They can't build a suit? And then I realized, no, it, it really it does boil down to that arc reactor. And even though all it really does for Tony is keep metal from going into his heart, uh, that arc reactor is what p- can possibly power a suit of armor. Yeah. And so that's the problem is that nobody can create something that can power something this powerful. But yeah. also not so, be like huge and clunky, like right. really streamlined. Exactly. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, dun, 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 here's this dude that can also do it. Yeah. So, so yeah. now we're in this whole new world and uh, yeah, we find ourselves uh, in the next phase of uh, Iron Man and uh, enforcing what he's said. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to worry about this. No, I, 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 I think it's really cool that um, they sort of cut to the chase because they could have uh, built up the suspense of like, who is this bad guy? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. No. Or showed up, like the next scene we see is Robert Downey Jr. W- Meeting him face to face, yeah, and Terry, like that yeah. was, and just and just saying like, hey, what's up, bad guy? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And now, and, like, and wh- like wh- why did you do this? You yeah. could have, you could have done this you any other sold way. It. Yeah, yeah. You could have sold it. You could have been a billionaire. What's what's your beef with me, dog? And yeah. he's like, your beef is, you know, his beef is your dad stole my dad's tech, and. Yeah. I can build your shit, and all I wanted to do was humiliate you in front of the world. Yeah. yeah. He's basically, yeah. 
And, and, and it's all he all he had to do was raise reasonable doubt to for a guy who claimed to have privatized world peace. All he had to do is just make him look like a fool, and then world peace is no longer privatized. Yeah, and everybody's freaked out. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's that yeah. right there yeah. for a villain's uh, motivations is kind of um, kind of genius. It, yeah. it kind of puts it all all in. It's like you can't be a superhero if there's somebody who's who's gonna just basically tear you down. Yeah. Right. Um, or at the very and, least, and, and if people don't believe you're uh, the superhero, right? Then what's the point? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. You're you're not infallible anymore. Yeah. Uh. So so yeah. Now uh now now we're in this uh, new new realm of uh what what happens next uh. Ivan is going to jail and Tony has been dethroned. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, what, what happens next? So then uh, Tony is, they're flying back from Monaco and he really tries to convince Pepper that he just doesn't want to go home. The, the Palladian's getting stronger and he's getting weaker. However, she still doesn't know about she the She still Palladian. doesn't know because he refuses to share his feelings or you right. know, ask for help. But they still aren't he's not technically. A team player. He's uh, not a team player. He's not a team yeah. player. He yeah. is he is a lone gunman, but he and at this point him and Pepper are like it's obvious things have happened, but it's they're definitely not considering themselves a thing to the extent that he is very openly flirting with Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so they're uh, they're on the plane. She's like, we have to go back. We have to do damage control because this guy humiliated you. And now everybody thinks that Iron Man, you know, basically enemy Iron Man's going to pop up, pop up everywhere. Uh, they get back to uh, New York. Uh, and then on the flip side, Ivan Vanko's in prison, basically going to be, you know, going to stand trial. And then uh, some guard gets him out of prison. He busts out. While using mashed potato explosion, mashed potatoes. <laughs> he he first kills somebody who looks like yeah. him, you know, to, to set it up. Then uses mashed potato explosives, uh, right. walks out. Also, does not look at the explosion behind him. No, snaps Again. somebody's neck, keeps walking, explodes, doesn't look at it. And you find out that he has been cool guys don't look at explosions. Cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> uh, so that he's been taken by Justin Hammer, who watched the whole debacle in Monaco and was impressed with how hard he shattered Tony's ego. Uh, and so I'll cut back. Uh, they do go. Uh, Tony and Pepper do go back to New York to celebrate uh, Tony's birthday and. Tony's conflicted because, as I said, the Palladium's getting worse and he doesn't know what to do. And in some in a heart to heart moment with Miss Rushman, uh, she tells him that if it was my last day on earth, I would do whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. Which Tony proceeds <laughs> to get fucking obliterated in his Iron Man suit and yes. just put he's, he's like dancing with the DJ. Yeah. Like yeah. stumbling in a suit of armor. Yeah, just and, and, and then playing target practice. I yeah. think I, I think I, I, th I think it was like the the sort of skeet shooting target practicing yeah. that uh, made Don Cheadle flip. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. No. No. no like the, the like the, there is like a weird weight that sets in in that scene, and he does that weird like roar, yeah. and it's just like shit. This guy's out of control. Like we gotta do something yeah. about this. Yeah. And you know, yeah, he is kind of out of control. Yeah. And like, but, but yeah, but you can't reason with a guy in an Iron Man suit. No. no. Yeah. But but also, yeah. And that's the part of the problem because they're trying to be nice, and he's not listening. He's completely. Yeah. Right. Completely gone. But also, it's his cry for help. Yeah. It's him being like, I, I'm going to die. It's pretty much the closest <laughs> to like the demon in the bottle storyline that right. they were going to kind of touch upon because, you know, they do use alcohol for it, uh, but they, you know, they wouldn't necessarily go farther. But, you know, so he's kind of gone. He's making a mess. And no matter what they try to tell him to stop the party, he won't stop. Mm -hmm. That's when Dodge Heels like, fuck this. I'm going to take control. He gets in one of the armors downstairs. Uh, gets everybody to leave the party, and then Tony and Rhodey duke it out to the beats of DJ AM, rest in yeah. peace. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's actually one of my favorite lines of that movie. He's like, hey, DJ, can you... Can you play a beat that I could kick my friend's ass? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love how Robert Downey Jr. actually laughs as he says yeah. it. It's great. It's great. And, and like, uh, that's probably the funnest scene yeah. In, yeah. The, in the whole movie. Um, and it's a necessary action sequence yeah. because I think we have kind of said this is a more like character development driven exactly. story. And so there's not a whole lot of fighting. Like the, the villain as we know them is in jail now. Yeah, yeah. 
Or actually, yeah. just the got enemy broken out. But is Tony Stark himself. Exactly. I think that's. Oh, yeah. oh damn! It. Yeah. He's the enemy, and I, I think those, those are the kind of things that people, when they watch him, are like, "Oh, well, he's not fighting off a terrorist group. He's not doing this." But yeah. the, the conflict really is about Tony, and it's about right. really he's he's become a hero now. He needs to cement being a hero. He yeah. fights with Rhodey. Uh, it does not go well. They do this kind of blasty blaster thing to each other, and it yeah. creates this chain reaction that explodes them both back and just fucks up Tony's beautiful L.A. mansion uh-huh. on a cliffside. He will rebuild. Yeah, yes. he will rebuild because he's got a lot of money. <laughs> but everybody's recorded this. This is also an era where everybody finally has cell phones. We were all kind of talking about how incredible yeah. it is. Within two years, everybody yeah. in this movie also has cell phones. So they're recording, yeah. you know, what's going on with the fight. Uh, and then Rhodey leaves with the suit of armor, which, you know, is batshit crazy. And yeah. then he just flies back to the Air Force Base or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, hey, guys. Check out what I got. Yeah, hey, this is ours now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know why Pretty why much. that's okay, but it's well, ours. And, and here's the thing. It's like Tony Stark at any point could have shut it off. Yeah. He had the ability to do that, but he was at that point so depressed and, and messed up. Uh, thinking that he was going to die, that he was willing to just give his technology over yeah. to the government. You know, Taj, and I never realized that until you mentioned And when I watched it, I was like, I never picked that up. That what? they're like, you yeah, know, oh, yeah. you could have stopped the suit at any point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it, it could have just been like Samuel L. Jackson baiting him or something. But yeah. no, but yeah, I mean, it's real. Like, And that's what he's doing throughout the entire first act of this movie is he's basically saying, well, if, I'm gonna, yeah. if, I, if I am going to die, then I need to make sure that certain things are in place. I also uh, wonder if it's like a brief metaphor because of the success of Iron Man 1 right is the start of the Marvel Universe so here they are they're testing the waters like we can make Iron Man 2 you know and maybe we'll we'll still try to see reach that Avengers thing but maybe this won't work right. and so in the thing he's still like the franchise could literally die right you know it's like maybe, like, maybe we're just gonna just be real strong with the metaphors in this one uh, but yeah. uh yeah because it really was still baby steps at that yeah, point like, I mean, really, like they still were kind of building to a franchise which a lot of people at the time were like the Avengers is going to be impossible yeah. a lot of people oh, yeah. approached it as like this franchise is be impossible so so at this point cut to what I think is one of the best cinematic moments in this movie and uh, you know kicks in with some instrumental Beastie Boys <laughs> uh, we cut to yeah. Tony Stark uh, kicking back lounging inside a giant donut on top of a uh, donut shop in, in I, I, I assume it's Long Beach because yeah. I grew up yeah. By one of those in Long Beach, uh, early on in my life, but uh, but yeah, and and lo and behold, who shows up? Nick Fury, Nick, Nick, Fur- Fur- <laughs> Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson reprising his role as Nick Fury, uh, motherfucker, showing up in an actual part of the movie, not just a post credits. Yeah. Actually, sequence. Th- this and, and all of the scenes that Nick Fury is in, um, this is probably one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. And, awesome and, and, and I and I love the shit that he talks. Yeah, uh, he's like really Tony. embraced. He's having a lot of fun with yeah. this yeah. one. You, and you yeah, exactly. It. Because he knows he caught Tony at a low point. Yeah, and he's like, "No, dude, no. <laughs> this is actually what's happening, and you know, you need to you need to join up or die. Yeah. Pretty much, this is yeah. it. Um, you know, we, you need us now. Yeah, but, you know, yeah." And uh, when they're in the donut room, you know, Tony brings up the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> the donut room. I like that. <laughs> uh, Tony brings up the Avengers Initiative to which, you know, Nick Fury replies that uh, that there's bigger things going on, that it's not about that. But they need him to be back to where he was because Nick Fury's always thinking about, you know, the world's defense. Uh, and, you know, they need their one of their top people in, in top form. So he also is introduced to the real Natalie yes. Rushman. Uh, yes. Who's uh, Natasha Romanov. Comes out and she's all in her get up. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's the first the first of many Natasha Romanov get ups. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite Black Widow yet. It's still kind of like dark, dark blue. But yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of more yeah. like a shield outfit in a yes. way. But it has the, you know, the patterns and especially the. Uh, the widow blasters on her yep. on her wrists are still pretty pretty accurate, mm-hmm. but um, they basically tell Tony that uh, they know something that he doesn't, which is there is a way to stop the Palladium from poisoning. He just needs to figure it out. Yeah, uh, I will then jump back to Ivan Vanko, who was uh, saved by um, Justin Hammer. Justin Hammer wants to basically have Vanko. Uh, make new suits of armor that are going to just totally embarrass Tony Stark at his own fair at the Stark Expo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, Iron Manko is totally down for it. He laughs yeah. with his, like, crazy grill and just wants his birth. 
Yeah. I just maybe, love my bird. Maybe. <laughs> no, <laughs> my, <his> bird. my bird. <laughs> my bird. My <laughs> bird. This is my Russian accent. <laughs> now, you know, I, Toby has a friend who who's a, a Russian Russian linguistics major. Is that right? Oh, well, or, I mean, my, my sister-in-law, just, she's... You know, she is, she's from Kazakhstan. She speaks oh, Russian. Well, there you go. And she <laughs> just could like, not yeah, no. stop laughing at his accent, which I was, want my bird. <laughs> I want my bird. bird. Anyhow. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 yeah. So, but, uh, you know, obviously I, Ivan uh, might have some ulterior motives, yes. but, uh, but he sees, he sees an opportunity and he, he, uh, j- he jumps upon it. Uh, so, so yeah, at that point, um, Tony uh, has this box of of goodies that that uh, Nick Fury dr- dumps on his lap because he tells him, "Hey, guess what? Your dad was a founding member of Shield, Shield uh, which you know in the first movie they could not figure out the strategic homeland <laughs> intelligence espionage, info- espionage. Sixth division. They, like nobody ever put together that it, it spelled Shield <laughs> <laughs> until the end of the movie. They're like, no, 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 we it don't. Calls, like, no, hey guys, so we figured it out. Just call it Shield." <laughs> So, um, so yeah, yes, and then, then, then like Tony's got this little treasure trove of like uh, daddy stuff. And- really great. Like Walt Disney esque, uh, <laughs> movies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was very much inspired by the yeah. old, like Walt Disney talking to the camera stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and I of just, course, uh, I mean, Howard point, Stark, there's yeah. a point where his, his dad just talks to him directly. It's like, there's some outtakes and he's like, oh, <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> and he's drinking as much as Tony. He's got like giant oh, glass of whiskey. And all of a sudden he goes a little silent. And it's like, Tony. Tony, by the way, I know you're going to watch this Obviously. many years from now. I think I might have a new, you know, a new element <laughs> that might be able to help you in your situation that's happening right. currently for you. I know this is odd. <laughs> you're gonna have to just figure it out. But like, you're just gonna have to put a, I believe, hey, I believe in you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's all Tony needed. Son. Cause up until now, Tony had the feeling that his father really didn't care about yeah. him. He was cold, distant, calculated, and honestly, uh probably very similar to Tony Stark himself. We see this, of course, in Captain America the First Soldier or or the first hero. What is that? Avenger, the first, first Avenger. The first Avenger. There we go. Uh because we have a young Tony Stark and he does almost a, like identical or Howard uh, Howard Stark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he almost does almost an identical uh, presentation as Tony with the dancing girls and the flying car yeah. in that film. So so we already know that they're both kind of the same narcissistic, crazy, probably at a certain point introverted individuals and they don't know how to express actual emotion to anyone. So so it's not surprising that Howard Stark was was a cold, distant father. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, but yes, yeah, so now Tony but finds a genius out nonetheless. a genius nonetheless, and and also knows that his son has the, the same potential. capacity yeah. to be that smart, if not even more so. If because not even more he, so. yeah, he has the the capacity to do tech, to work with technology that Howard never would have a chance to. And also, we didn't get to mention that uh, Howard was played by a different actor. There was like he was kind of like a yes. model face in the first movie, but this one was, he was uh, like a couple. There were a couple of pictures. I yeah, think. exactly. This one was played by John Slattery of of Mad Men and, and Thirty Rock, and he does a really I mean, he looks very similar to the guy who played before, but he does a really great job. He does. And yeah. then he goes on to continue playing the role, uh, yeah. at the very least, in Ant-Man. Um, and Civil War. And Civil War. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, so yeah. Probably being Captain Marvel, I'm thinking. That's what we were thinking. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, they, they, they are going to have to... It's going to be weird because they're going to have to... Uh, like probably because the actor's older, they're going to have to de-age him, but like only a certain amount, not as much yeah. <laughs> like uh, de-age slightly. Uh, but yeah. So, so yeah. And he does a great job yeah. uh, in the role, in my opinion. Uh, so at this point, uh, Tony realizes he, he has the power, the self, the self power to do this. He goes down to Pepper's office uh, to try to uh, ask for an apology after the mishap of the birthday party mm. uh, and gets immediately rejected mm-hmm. uh, by Pepper, or tries to give her uh, strawberries, which was basically poison her. <laughs> and he finds this old um, replica of the original Stark Expo and something about it really stands out to him. So he takes it back with him and in Goes back to his lab, scans it, and this is incredible. Like, there's really great yeah. CGI yeah. in all these fucking movies, but this sequence, he literally maps out this like expo map 
and then pulls out a digitized version and just begins to fuck with like yeah. hard light. It's really and fun. And it's so cool looking. And yeah. he yeah. figures out that his dad basically was telling him about an element that would sustain uh, the arc reactor core in any capacity. Uh, and he then makes a new element yeah. by yeah. <laughs> putting a by collider. Uh, <laughs> and, so, and so, yeah, so you see this awesome CGI sequence. You figure out what his dad was trying to say him. And then the next line, I think Tony says is like, all right, robots. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into build mode. <laughs> I need a jackhammer. I wish like the camera turned like, yeah, and the I robot need, just like gave him a thumbs up. Yeah, it was just like, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I need a jackhammer. I'm going to build a super collider in my house. <laughs> Yeah, and that he does, God, God, and that he does. You know, but, but yeah. it's it's just it's pretty awesome. Just sort of like, oh yeah, Tony Stark's on that level. It's just like, <laughs> hey, robots, we're gonna build a super collider. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna build a particle collider. Yeah. in my house. And of course, uh, you know, the funny part is that he uses the uh, Captain America shield. Yeah. to yeah. like. Balance it perfectly. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. like, that's well, the first time. Yeah. You know, like he wasn't using lasers to like make that measurement. No, no. It's just, it's just like, <laughs> he's, the, he's, like he's just like using a balance that like any carpenter yeah. was like. Oh, yeah. No, actually, in that whole scene, like if you look, because I, I watched it earlier this week too, but if you look like at every point in that collider's path, the, it's all being held up so precariously. It's like books on top of a motorcycle yeah, exactly. or like, you know, it's just ridiculous crap just like piled together to hold this thing up because that's what we were saying about Tony Stark it's like he can't see two feet in front of his face but in the moment he's like a brilliant genius yeah. like I'm gonna make this work yeah. uh, by hell or high water to the extent that you were like why wasn't he aiming the laser beam in the right direction <laughs> in the like, first place in the first yeah. place no he's just like I gotta get this thing going okay now start and it's like now I'm burning a hole in my yeah. wall with now, this giant now laser I'm my house in half with a laser beam yeah. So, so yeah he goes through that whole process and he makes this new element and as it turns out oh this is a perfect replacement for pulling Palladium, so hopefully you won't uh, die from won't your have a checker board board stomach and neck. Yeah. So <laughs> meanwhile, while all that's going on, Ivan is uh, hanging out with Hammer and yeah. uh, disappointing him. Yeah, uh, over and over and over. He and makes uh, he turns the suits into droids. Yes, and he he gets his bird, but it's not his bird. Right. Uh, and uh, Justin Hammer just says, you know, I I better these droids better be the you know talk of the town. They better you know blow everybody away because what I wanted was suits. That's what everybody's thinking about. Uh, meanwhile. Uh, Justin Hammer is called in by the government to update the Iron Man armor that Rhodey took. Right. And there's a really, it's a really great sequence where he, you know, shows off, showcases all these really obscene guns and weapons. Yes. And Rhodey's like, I want them all on this thing. <laughs> so I want to turn this thing into basically the sleeker version of the Iron Monger from the yeah. first one. Um, a war machine. A if war you machine, if you would. Um, <laughs> Uh, in in the process, he uh, still like what is it? He builds the droids, uh, but there's something about it that he he needs more time or something. This pisses off, um, uh, right? Oh, Hammer. well, well. So Hammer is with uh, Gary Shandling at uh, playing golf, and, yeah. and he's like, he wants to come by for a demonstration. He's like, no, we can't do a demonstration. Yeah, and so he gets pissed off, and he comes back, and he's like. Uh, I, I'm gonna take your bird and your shoes and your pillows. <laughs> yeah, how, how, and he, and he looks surprised feel, by this. How which does it really feel to have things taken away I from know, you? I mean, he's, he's and, really, and, and Ivan's all like, "Dude, like <laughs> my like, dad from, like died a sad, lonely, alcoholic death, and yeah. <laughs> I didn't have much better. So <laughs> like, I'm still it, in a nice, well lit room. Really, like, yeah, exactly. I'm really not much a big better than where I was. <laughs> no, and 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 then on top of that, like uh, I. I he, uh, yeah, so, so basically Hammer's like, I've got a Iron Man suit now, so I don't need you anymore. Yeah. You're, you're going to stay here with these security guards and, so, and I'll probably Don pop your ass back gave in us prison. the technology. Yeah. Thanks, Don. <laughs> yeah. And then like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that whole, I, and so that's one of the things about this movie that is kind of like, there's some unnecessary scenes. Like we didn't need to see Hammer lay down the hilarious hammer on Ivan and be like, nah, we no, have because it was obvious that he was already yeah. going to take control. Of yeah, the exactly. And run amok. Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
at that point, uh, Justin Hammer is going to go to Stark Expo, show off the drones, but the you know his piece de resistance is going to be the War Machine armor, and he leaves uh, Vanko with two guards, you know, two big intimidating guards, and basically, right. I think threatened that he's going to take his ass back to prison because he's fucking worthless at this point. He doesn't need him, uh, and. Uh, Tony's, you know, testing out his new arc reactor and it, it all clicks. Jarvis is like, yo, dude, all good. Mm. And he gets a call, some fr- an unknown call and is not a telemarketer. It's Vanko uh, from the well-lit room who's killed the two burly guards. Just has him hanging behind yeah. him. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's, a really well, art. <laughs> it's a really well-framed shot, too. I it's was like, like fucked wow, up art piece. The composition of this <laughs> shot and, is and beautiful. For some reason, There's a bird like, on his shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, and, he, and for some reason, he has like his hoodie on. Yeah, and, yeah. he's on, he's, and he's using like a uh, like a workman's phone. Yeah, he's like, exactly. he's like all wired into a panel on the floor. <laughs> for some that weird he reason, up. he felt that it was necessary to throw on some sunglasses. Yeah, and his hoodie. I, he has very like, Tony Stark as sunglasses, yeah. mind you. Yeah. Also, Justin, you didn't get a chance to mention, but he still has that fucking toothpick in his mouth. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. whole time, he's still rocking that toothpick. So, I, and, and and you know. <laughs> they couldn't have picked a better actor for this role. Well, yeah, you I know, think Mi- he did a fine Mi- job. Mickey, though, Mickey Rourke was another great casting choice because he did he he did come in with the weight of of his previous you know his career previously absolutely and yeah. I and I think he did the wrestler right before before yeah. uh, this mm-hmm. movie and so it's like yeah Mickey Rourke looks bad you know it, it was like I think it was like Sin City the wrestler yeah yeah, yeah. um and he then, did once upon a time in uh Mexico, yeah, and then Sin City, and yeah. then yeah. So, the so he, he he sort of comes in with this kind of like this uh, this weight where uh, for an actor, it's like Mickey Rourke has been through hell and back, yeah, you know. But and uh, much like Robert Downey Jr. is yeah. like the antithesis, yeah. I mean that that's why that's what made him such a great bad guy. He didn't really have to do much, <laughs> but. Mickey Rourke isn't really one of the better actors that he could have gotten for this. No, no, but you know, and and, and that's expressed in like his bad accent, the 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 attention to the continuity of the toothpick, (laughs) and and the choice for for them for the film crew to be like Mickey Rourke is probably like nah. The hoodie's going up, <laughs> and I need a pair of sunglasses. He's, he's a and very like, hip dude. Like, like, like that's... that did not need to happen. <laughs> There's no reason for the hoodie to be up. The sunglasses, and the he ever just wanted present to be toothpick. fucking cool, dude. But he just wanted to look so super cool in that scene. Anyways, I digress. But I, what a hilarious scene! Man. I'm gonna digress even further and say I think Wiz Khalifa saw this movie and was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. That that's, that's what I'm going be. for. Yep. <laughs> That's my look. Now, anyhow, um, so so yeah, he, he uh, called uh, Vanko calls Tony and says, "Listen, uh, everything you've made, you destroyed my father's life in twenty years. I'm going to destroy it in twenty minutes, or mm-hmm. something like that. Is that what you, or something long two hours, hour, something dramatic. <laughs> it was, there was uh, twos involved. Tony realized at that point that he's going to do something at the Stark Expo, so he pops in the new." core and it tastes like uh coconut and metal coconut and metal and he blasts his way from los angeles to new york uh then we have one of my favorite scenes where sam rockwell uh they turn on uh, average white people yeah. and uh, the theme from, <laughs> from swingers comes on and like sam rockwell just dances his way to, yeah. to the stage, <laughs> which I heard was he's, actually improv. He's, yeah, he's and, he's like he's dancing and shuffling. And he's like, "Yo, what's up, people? <laughs> yeah, we got Justin robots. Hammer. We got I, Justin Hammer. We got I'm robots. An average Here's white the person. Navy. Boom, boom. I, I, Here's I, the yeah, 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 right. yeah. And he's like doing like moves. He's like, "Here's the Navy, uh, and then like <laughs> yeah. you know, here's the Army, woo, <laughs> and, then, and then and then right before he he's the, announces the Marines, he does like a pelvic thrust yeah. towards the camera and he's <laughs> like the Marines I really think he was just trying to just you know really show his thoughts in each swipe and uh, and twist and turn what he thought about each of the military groups yeah. right yeah <laughs> Marines yeah and for him the Marines are all about pelvic thrust yeah. <laughs> exactly um, yeah. so he shows them off and then he shows off the new war machine everyone's like ooh and ah yeah. and then Pepper's all pissed he's there's, like why yeah, is there's a, there's a great uh, yeah. crowd reaction of Pepper going yeah. what <laughs> and then, what roadie yeah. and then something happens that like you should have you should have uh, earlier in the movie 
There's a scene where Hammer's like, yo, dude, these these robots are supposed to be made for humans. Why are you making them droids? And in a bad Russian accent, he says, people bad. Yeah. <laughs> droids good. Dro- Pretty dro- much. Yeah. Drone better. <laughs> yeah, drone, drone better. People better. cause problem. Cool. How could that go wrong? Right? Well, <laughs> it turns out <laughs> from how, you know, from many miles away, Ivan's there with the two dudes still hanging in the background. Yeah. He is still very comfortable his, in that room. He does wearing, not want to yeah, leave. Still wearing his hoodie. He's like hacking into the robots and it's like, oh, we're gonna have some fun now. Um, <laughs> And a really amazing battle sequence ensues. I really enjoy yeah, this yeah, one. It's okay. a lot of robots. I mean, that's the thing about these movies. Is Robot that overload. They, well, well, I mean, they just kept upping the ante on robots yeah, yeah. with each one to the extent that uh, at the end of Iron Man 3, he like busts out every, every concept arm. drawing of yeah. Iron Man ever yeah. submitted and explodes <laughs> them all on it, screen. It, it's, it's like in the Matrix movies, it's like... Oh, you thought one Agent Smith was bad? Yeah, how about <laughs> like let's out a whole army. Like, <laughs> just, just, yeah, and it's like yeah, in this movie they're definitely like let's have an army of robots. <laughs> yeah. But it um, works. It yeah, works really yeah, it's well. Really cool. And the whole action sequence involved uh, at the end of the film is is very well done. Uh, it culminates with a battle in kind of a, a, a terrarium of sorts, yeah, an it's arboretum, like Japanese peace garden. Yeah, and it's Which lo- it's just like total shout out to kung fu movies. Yeah, yeah. it definitely but, uh, it definitely I, feels yeah, like yeah, you it. definitely feel it's like oh robot kung fu. Yeah, it's going down. And it, yeah. you know we get this really great. Side by side, Rhodey and Tony kind of fighting yeah. together for survival. And uh, we also get a parallel of the first kind of badass Black Widow sequence where right, she takes she out hacks like fucking in. nine dudes in a matter oh, of that's minutes. that's right. Uh, which is really awesome. But they, they, you know, they stop the robots. Ivanko makes his face, you know, he's like, I'm going to kill you both just myself. They stop Vanko. Uh, he has one last, you know, plan effort to kill everybody like the Predator. And he just starts laughing because he's got a bomb attached to him and every mm-hmm. joy's got a bomb. Uh, Tony realizes this saves Pepper. And then uh, they kind of pledge their undying love uh, for each other. And they kind of finally accept the way that they feel. And uh, Rhodey becomes a staple where he, you know, he's going to be keeping his armor and, and being a yeah. hero as well. Yeah. Uh, and the movie ends with uh, Tony... You know, meeting with Nick Fury, Nick Fury saying, you know, you have what it takes to be a team player. But right now we'd rather have you as a consultant uh, for the Avengers. Uh, But for what you did, we definitely want to recognize that. And he wants to be recognized by getting a medal from uh, Gary Shandling and kind of giving a big (laughs) fuck you Uh, to ECDC. Yeah, and some more ACDC and end of movie. (laughs) Yeah, no. And and honestly, uh, in my opinion, a great Great uh, addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. I think people, uh, yeah, people really need to look at this on, as its own kind of, well, not actually as its own. It needs to be looked at as a continuation in the story of Tony Stark. And like I said, is the first one established that he can be a hero. Then the second one is what does that mean? And right. how does he be a better one? Yeah. So how can yeah. he not just be the spoiled, rich, uh, only child mm-hmm. of a yeah. weapons developer? Well, you know, it, it's definitely it's definitely the story of like the lone gunman learning how to be a team player. Right. Yeah. You know, learning that he needs to, to branch out and to, to, to depend on start, other and sort of give up some of some of his power. And yeah, yeah. Um, and ultimately, he's the main uh uh, benefactor, not benefactor. He's the main uh, contributor, to, or yeah. financial contributor to to what is the Avengers. I mean, yeah. obviously, he's the one that's footing the bill for all of that yeah. stuff. Uh, nobody else is, yeah. is getting paid. Everyone's pretty poor. I you guess know? they can get some like Asgardian gold, but I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna right? take like that. how does Captain America pay his electric bill? Like I don't. I understand. think the government just pays him because he's that's still true. on tab. I mean, if, by when you watch Winter yeah. Soldier, he's basically being paid to be special ops. Yeah. So the, you know he's being paid by the the gold old good U.S. of A. Um, but it, it's funny. I didn't get to mention this in the first movie, but uh, you know this movie almost didn't happen. At least from one and two didn't happen the way that they were planning to because. Uh, the first movie they were planned to do Iron Man, but it was supposed to be directed by Nick Cassavetes, who mm. did The Notebook, which was funny mm. because I believe The Notebook actually came out around the same time as Spider Man Two. That's to weird. circle that back, and uh, Tom Cruise was very close to playing uh, Iron Man. John oh, Favreau wow. was actually attached to Captain America, and when oh, Nick, Ca- Nick Cassavetes dropped out, they're like, "We really want Iron Man to still be one." They switched Favreau over to Iron Man, and the rest. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think it was smart starting with Iron Man. Um, And I think maybe some of the backlash on this one just had to do with the fact that really so far they had only had Iron Man and then the Incredible Hulk. And the fact that they were doing another Iron Man, it was probably like that feeling of after they had had Hulk and then the Incredible Hulk. Like, oh, are they just going to keep doing this or are they just going to keep remaking it? Like, we already have three Spider-Man movies. We have two bad Fantastic Four movies, which I actually really enjoy. 18 Uh, reboots of Batman. Yeah, 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 you know, so, so people were just... I think maybe just turned off to the idea of like doing something over again. Yeah. But I think that if you go back and you watch this movie, it really does hold up. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's got a great villain, uh, albeit uh, Mickey Rourke, maybe not the best ambassador for the, the Russian population. <laughs> but you know, yeah. this guy's supposed to be a caricature. It's yeah. supposed to yeah. be yeah. like it's comic books. That's exactly. A, yeah. Exactly. And, and Mickey Rourke was a perfect, um, comic book villain and he yeah. seemed to be yeah. having so much fun doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Which he so went on to do it. again, of course, or yeah. or had done yeah, uh, for, with, with Sin City. Before, yeah. So, so yeah, like it was obvious like that he was making a staple in this, like if I'm going to look like this kind of weird creature Dark, now. crazy character. Yeah, I might as well take advantage of that yeah. and, and cash in. So I think it was a really smart move on that part. And and like we said before, introduces Don Cheadle, who goes on to be uh, War Machine or Iron Patriot or a yeah. back to War Machine at some point. But uh, yeah, and, and also uh, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, you know, this really was the one that started putting the players into positions. Exactly. So like yeah, Nick seeing, Fury. Like, even yeah, Nick, Fury, Nick Fury. So, I mean, like, like... an actual speaking part in the film. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, that... It, it's a... It's a, it, more players involved, more moving pieces in the storyline. Mm-hmm. Was it better than the first Iron Man? Was it better? Better is hard to say because it was like you were saying, Toby, that it's it's really we we love new things and and that experience. And for me, uh, having been an Iron Man fan, getting to feel like I was becoming Iron Man throughout the course of the first movie really was the ultimate enjoyment factor yeah, for me. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I I won't say it's a better movie, uh, but you know what? I won't say one's a better movie either. Uh, I think that I like them both pretty much on the same playing field. Um, I think that you really should watch one before you watch two. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that if I'm in the mood to watch Iron Man, I can watch either one of these uh, and and be satiated, yeah. sa- sa- satiated. <laughs> uh, Maybe just for the fact that we get the 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 original Iron Man armor. Yeah. Maybe Iron Man One yeah. wins for that fact alone. Yeah. Yeah. Because that really. But but the, ultimately, I I enjoy the villain more. I enjoy the story arc more yeah. in Iron yeah. Man yeah. Two. Um. Yeah. It really is just. But be- I think it's better in that respect. I think it's a better storyline in that respect. Whereas in Iron Man One, it's just really that whole. You got you that know, origin. Thing. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. yeah this That's is- the part of Iron Man One that I really appreciate. So I think I appreciate them almost at the same level for different reasons. Yeah. Okay. And I think something also kind of add on that is like a lot of people blame this movie is like, well, it's just pre Avengers. Like, yeah, it's pre Avengers. They have to set they all, yeah, they all <laughs> have to set up the thing, but in no way does introducing, uh, Natasha and Nick Fury and, uh, who else? Uh, basic or Don or Don Cheadle or, or Brody as War Machine ever detract from Tony's journey? No. And so his Tony Stark's character journey continues without you know with all these new pieces of the board, but it doesn't detract. So I for people who come constantly complain, it's like oh well, it's fucking Avengers point five. Yeah, it is, but it's also Iron Man's movie. It doesn't detract from that, and it still continues his journey, and he grows tremendously as a character. So y'all need to back the fuck off. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's a dope fucking movie. All right, and and I'm I'm gonna say I mean the first Iron Man is so iconic. Yeah, at this I've, point, yeah, the imagery is awesome. Yeah, the imagery, just the the whole. I think the pacing of the movie was a lot better in the yeah, first. Uh, I'll agree first with film. that. Um, but yeah, there's more meat in the story of the second one. If I would have had I, actually watching the second one today, it's like I, it was a better made movie than I originally thought. Um, but it just the action sequences, although bigger and better, um, they weren't as tight and mm-hmm. they didn't move along with the story um, as, as well as the yeah. first. One. I would say the, the, just, the Black Widow one was yeah. pretty cool, but that's also because it's totally different from what we've seen. It's not a big yeah. robot fight. It's just a really cool. It's just a hand. cool fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know, like uh, there's there's th- th- you know three or no there's 
two robot fights. Mm-hmm. The second well, three one, because you got <laughs> yeah. the first one is the the car sequence. Well, uh, it's yeah. like robot versus uh, whip. Yeah. The second one on the in the boxing Roadie. between Rhodey and yeah. then, and then the last one where he fights like uh, yeah, this, you know it's got some. <laughs> Cool action. I don't know, yeah. man. The first first Iron Man all day, dude. Mm-hmm. First yeah, Iron Man yeah no, I day. hear you. Yeah. And I understand that. And also just, I it's always going to have that special place in our hearts because it really did. It kicked off yeah. this whole new if world. If it wasn't for that. If I was, was going to show like a 10-year-old kid who doesn't know, you know who's yeah. getting into comic book movies, I'm like, I don't know if Iron Man would be the first one, yeah. but right, um, that would definitely. But be you'd the show him that before. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Of course, you'd show it before Iron Man too. But that that's well, always you know, that's always the, like, the flaw the, the, of this the, 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 the whole podcast. Like, hey, <laughs> I want to watch the Avengers, and you're like, hold on, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna watch. You need to yeah, understand you, you the you steps. Got, yeah, you gotta watch yeah. Iron Man. You don't have to watch second. Thor, <laughs> but maybe yeah. the first two Iron Man. It's, it's uh, funny you said that thing though about you know. Uh, kind of introducing that as the first because like realistically the comic book wave you know started with Blade oh of one. course and, like Blade oh, is yeah. like the most like kids should not watch Blade 1 no, no <laughs> they absolutely but it's like as not. rated R and hard as it you know as it could fucking be but now we're kind of like reaching the equilibrium where we yeah. also see that it doesn't just have to be dark to be fucking cool no which I absolutely really appreciate not. no 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 so well, hell, thank you so much, Toby, for joining us today. Thank uh, you for having me. I'm so glad we ran into each other at Trader Joe's. Woo! Uh, I'm glad we got to hang out, eat some EGs, yeah. uh, watch some some superhero films. Uh, and it really is kind of a perfect moment. We're about to have Captain Marvel gets released next week. Uh, then we've got End Games after that at the end of April. So this kind of is fitting to, to be celebrating kind of the beginning of this whole journey. Uh, so once again, if you want want to see more about what Toby does in the uh, cinematic universe of his own, uh, <laughs> check out Pop Art Pictures online yeah. at all of those apps. Facebook, you know. Twitter, Instagram. You can find get all, all that. The, get all the info. Until then, if you want to uh, see Knock Knock, you can buy it on Amazon.com. Why I'm plugging them again, I don't know. But that is where I found it, and I got it pretty quickly. Uh, But soon should be distributed on more uh, streaming platforms for your viewing enjoyment. Uh, So, yeah, enjoy your time in Los Angeles. Yeah, thank you so much for for having me. And I I hope maybe one time I can can do this again, because I really had a blast. I really appreciate you guys doing this. No, it was, and, a, nice, and may, we, it was we, a nice seven hour hang. You know? Yeah, no, good times had by all. So, uh, so yes, and of course, as always, thank you, Justin, for for producing hey, a wonderful yeah. afternoon yeah, for us right. here. I should have rated it in a little bit more. I'm sorry. Oh no, no worries. Uh, hopefully, I mean, everyone's listening is used to this. So yeah. you know, if if you it, can get through it, it, this should really be like a two part episode. This is probably, <laughs> but you know, if you if you made it this far, congratulations, and we love you. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for listening to yet another exciting. episode episode of Electric Boogaloo Part 2. Thank you. We're the superhero industrial complex. God bless Iron Man. God bless Iron Man. God bless Iron Man. God bless America.